Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, we have two very special, special, special guests. Mr. Jeremy Ray and Pat Chinita are in the house. What's up, guys? How are you, dude? Doing good. Glad to have Pat here. Pat. Doing good. Listen. Been, been waiting for the phone call. <laughs> we, what? I don't know what's happening here. Oh. We've been, guys. <laughs> trust me. Everybody's waiting for this fucking phone call, man. <laughs> no. Thank you so much for coming, Pat. It's amazing. I've been a big fan of yours for a long time. Very precision skateboarder. Front switch front heels. Ooh, you were a heel flipper. Yeah. I, you did kick flips too, but I feel like you were a heel <laughs> flipper. Is this true? Uh, probably skating with this guy. He did heel flips, so it kind of rubbed off. Well, on he me. set up for a heel flip, but he did kick flips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> very true. I say yeah. Pat's, Pat's really well rounded. I'd 100%. Say. Yeah, but yeah, I feel sense. like you were. you. Air towards the side of heel flips. Am I? Yeah. Yeah, I try to do both. I do what I can. Some tricks are easier than others. Okay. There you go. He always had a really good 360 flip too. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites when I first started skating was the Plan B Revolution. Okay. With both you guys in there, mm -hmm. and you guys both had just as sick parts. You guys didn't have better parts than the other. Don't you feel like kick flips were more common? So like heel flips sometimes were the better between the two because just, they were a little more rare. I kind of yeah. felt yeah. like they were just certain people were heel flippers and certain well, people, some were, people kick were heel flippers. flip only, and True. some people were kick flip only, and they definitely lean one way or the other. But I know Pat did them both equally as well, right. and he'd even hit the same spot and do the kick flip version and the heel flip version, yep. and probably run the heel flip in the video because that one was more rare or more hard. Yeah, he would you, could, or he'd would do you, a line where he'd get both. He'd do, you know, a, a variation flip and then do a heel flip. Do you back that statement? I mean, I'll do what I can and then we see what happens in the cutting board. You know? <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not the director. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't want to, I, I, I have to jump into this re real quick because it was such an interesting, we were having this conversation and listen, it happens all the time here. We start to talk before the show mm -hmm. and it just gets out of control and you have to put a stop to it i have to i had to separate these two we had to put them in different rooms until we started filming um but we know we were talking about the plan b era we were talking about jeremy you were they wanted you to go skate with pat they had you had you had you guys had received a video of pat from somewhere it was right. a sponsor me tape and they wanted you to go skate with pat but also keenan milton was in the mix at this point in time as well on plan B before he got on blind. Yeah. So we run back that story really quick. Cause it was so interesting. So we were skating with Gino and Keenan and Jason Dill a lot around that time. Mm -hmm. So there was even a point where we were going to start our own brand with uh, Brian Lottie and Dave Schlossbach was in the mix cause he was filming us. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole different story. Like we were, really close to starting a new brand called program wow. and it was oh. going to be all of us because we were kind of floating around it was before everyone found their places at world and 101 and you know blind and everything like that and i ended up on plan b this but, is 93 this is yeah, after the is. exodus of girl right and Ch girl riders right and after color broke up so we were kind of floating and everyone was finding their homes mm -hmm. so there was a brief time where we were going to get something together and then i ended up you know, that didn't work out, so I ended up with the Plan B guys and ended up on Plan B right when everyone left. So right when Mike and Rick and Sheffy and that whole crew, they all left. So you were talking to them while they were still on. You had the assumption when you were I, getting when on. When I got on Plan B, they had just left. I didn't know that until okay. I was talking to Mike Ternansky. It was right before that Pack to City contest, I think. So that's the way I remember it. We showed up there and they were already... It's, it's, it's almost like you got it but it was right in that you're like where'd everybody zone. where'd everybody go mm -hmm. yeah so we were part of the rebuilding and then it was me and bertino that got on and got announced at the same time in an ad in 411 and then uh pat got on shortly after they were telling me to take a look at pat and he lived up by me because most of those guys were san diego based so they said he's up by you go skate with him to see what's up with him so i ended up skating with him and Bilu a lot because his brother Bilu would film so then, you know, I skate with Pat, film with Bilu, and we just go out and get clips. And I gave him the thumbs up. Like, let's do it. Were you already knowing who Pat Chinita was? Because he had already skated for A Street and then Evil. Right. Yeah. I so think were you we familiar? together even, like, maybe an early castle contest or something? Possibly. I've heard about Jeremy okay. before because there was a shop in Huntington called uh, Bud Skate. Right. And we would go down to Huntington a lot. Okay. Yeah. B-U-T-T. 
That's uh, Bud. No, B-U-D. Oh, B-U-D. Buds. Like, like, buds. <laughs> buds. Yeah. I misunderstood. Yeah. Sorry. It was I Buds. Fix my, head, hit my head. <laughs> fix my headphones. Right. <laughs> buds gate. So yeah, there was a guy. Roll through Huntington. And they'd be like, oh, you got to see my friend. These two brothers, you know, like. Oh, yeah. And then that's how I heard about them. But even before, when you on Blockhead, I've seen right. you do stuff. I saw you kickflip the sports arena double set for your checkout. Were you there that day? I was there, but you didn't know I was there. Oh, oh wow. I was hiding in a car Exclusive. watching Exclusive. <laughs> I was like, Spygate. You were hiding in a car. Why? You just okay. wanted to see it go down. So we went to Sports Arena. We saw the double set. It was my brother and Marcel Johnson. Sick. And then we see him rolling up with Grant. And then they're going to shoot photos. So we're little kids and we're just like, oh, let's see what's going on. Look at these guys. It's like, hey, there's that dude. There's that dude. Mm -hmm. And then so we see him warm up, kick kick flipping like the force there before he goes to the double set. Does it a couple times. Then boom, kick flips the double set first try. And it's like, that's how I know how he is. Well, no one had done a flip trick down the sports arena double set yet. We had talked about this right before. You had gone down to Transworld to get a film right? That's different. That's that's, a different one? That's for the triple set. Yeah, gotcha, but yeah, with yeah. back gotcha, then, back gotcha, then we were little okay. dudes just skating the double set, and they had opened it up in the Plan B video with like, you know, a couple things going down it. Like Danny, Danny waited Wade in the backside back three, 360, right. mm-hmm. Pat Duffy got the backside 180, and uh, we went down there and skated it. And first thing you do is ollie it. Okay, that went fine. Then I used to do frontside 180, fine. Backside 180, fine. The next thing you're gonna do is a kickflip, and no one had ever done it yet. It's like, well, I'm gonna give it a shot. And then Grant was there to shoot my checkout for a Trans World. Grant Britain. And uh, yeah, uh, Dave Bergthold had hooked it up to have Grant there that day. We just got to shoot a photo for the checkout. Yeah. Know? And uh, I don't even think we knew exactly what we were going to shoot, but we're going to shoot something there. And then, yeah, after the other ones worked, first try, first try, first try, all right? I'm going for the kickflip. I love that you guys it. are so, you, you guys have been friends for so long, yeah, but you never that told day. him that you were lurking. Yeah. We were lurking. It was like after a questionable came out, it's like, yeah. hey, let's go check out this spot. Then we saw him already there, and then we're just we just sat in the car and watched. It's, it'd be awkward for you just walk up there. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're just what are you gonna do to stand there and watch? You know, like in like I don't know. That's like I would see that back in the day too. Like there was you saw like a pro trying something. You're like, yeah, let him have this. You stay that way. Yeah. 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 When I also remember being at that same spot years later, I was still with Blockhead at that point, and uh, I saw the Plan B guys skating the double set there too, and uh, Ryan Fabry was doing a 360 flip down it. Mm-hmm. And it was crazy because he wasn't even going that fast, but he had such big pop and he had a good tray flip that he was able to three six flip the whole thing. And he ended up breaking his tail, so he never got the roll away. So no one ever saw that footage. Wow. And then Sheffy, I think, was doing switch kick flips that day. So, but we were same thing. We were not joining the session. We were just driving by, saw it from the car, like, whoa, they're actually skating this thing, and you get to see what's going down. And it was rad just watching the session. So you went and skated with Pachinita, gave him the mm-hmm. thumbs up for for Plan B. Yeah. What had, was Keenan just on this? He had nothing to do with well, getting Keenan, Pat Keenan on? had been skating with me um, around that time when I had just gotten on. And uh, I'd do the trips down to San Diego and he would come with me. And then we'd just go skate some local spots. Uh-huh. And uh, he ended up doing a, a switch 360 flip down like a, I think it was a four stair sidewalk that was down there. Yeah. And uh, that was one of those things like it was pretty big for a switch 360 flip at the time. So... They thought it was, you know, plan B caliber. And they're like, well, and he did it with such good style, obviously, because it's Keenan mm-hmm. that, you know, he got the seal of approval. And I was just pushing for him like, yeah, if you guys have a spot for him, I, I'll, I'll work with him. You and know? this is before Blind. Who does Keenan skate for before plan B? Or was plan B his he, first sponsor? No, he wrote for Fun, that company with Keith Huff. Keith oh, Huffman yeah. oh, and yeah. uh, it was Eric Pupecki, mm. Keith, and did Gino ride for fun too, or was it just those three guys? I'm not sure, but I know it was an East Coast company that all those guys were from the East Coast, yep. but it was Ron Allen that was running it. Yeah. So, but yeah, I know that um, it was Keith and Keenan hmm. and uh, the other one. Imagine a Plan B video with Keenan Milton. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. yeah. Hell, right? right. It was close. He was on there while I was <clears throat> filming for Secondhand Smoke. He was writing for plan b at the beginning yeah but at the same yeah. time though everybody left right when this all this was happening right so, so he, was, he would have all... been part of that new rebuild with right. me right yeah. was his name in the ad at any play, at any time no i think right before we were able to do anything to promote that he was with us then he had just started getting cozy with the whole world crew mm. and like once you're in that camp you're in <laughs> and he would just skate with them more often and uh I think they were skating more of the style of stuff he liked to skate too. 
and it was just a better fit for him. Yeah. And also, when you ride for Plan B, you know you're gonna have to try to push your skating to a certain level, and I don't know, just keep maybe getting broke off. You got to try bigger and just gnarlier stuff sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think he was just like, you know what? I like these guys over at Blind. We're gonna skate this stuff, film some lines, you know. It was and a good move. Comfortable for him. there. Yeah. Know, it was a good was a, move. It was for a great him. fit. In the end, I like where he ended up, yeah. and like it did good for him. Totally. Yeah. Pause. Pause podcast. Okay. I need to tell you guys that this episode is brought to us by Athletic Greens. Ooh, we love Athletic Greens. We do. This is gold in a box, right? Love this stuff. <laughs> With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and Kelly's favorite thing in the whole world. Aptogens. I love there aptogens. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Well, not only that. Ooh, tell me, Drone. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Nothing budget, only nothing, buttery, right? Nothing budget, yeah, please. Yeah. But it also supports better sleep quality and recovery as well. Tons of people take multivitamins, but mm. it's important that you choose one with high quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. And it's also better when you, you know, uh, not to have a full medicine cabinet full of, you know, supplements. Oh, man. You know, wait, wait so I can get rid of all my supplements? Yeah, I was just over at Kelly's house the other day, opened the cup, I was hit with supplements. Get the trash can. Get. <laughs> Throw them in there. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with oh. your first purchase. All you have to do is just visit athleticgreens.com slash nine club. That's N-I-N-E-C-L-U-B. Again, athleticgreens.com slash nine club. Take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance today, there which is. is Athletic Greens. <laughs> Take over your health now. Pat, did you feel, how did you feel about the blind, uh, excuse me, the, the plan B rebuild at that time? Uh, because you were coming off of like, you were skated for A Street, then Evil, and we had a discussion about you actually turning pro for Evil, but the, you never saw a board, you had an ad for it. So there was an Evil ad that uh -huh. said like a uh, new pro, and there were four graphics. It was uh, like a baseball, football, soccer, and my name was under one of the one of the boards but our boards didn't have when the boards came out i don't think there were names on the boards but but in the ad your name it were... said i'm pro then here's my board Damn. with the four other boards and then so i tell tony it's like hey i didn't want to be pro whatnot and then he's like okay you're not pro oh wait you told tony <laughs> you didn't want to be pro yeah wait why why did you not want to be pro um i mean i felt at that time he wasn't really into the company and oh he we wasn't I feel like at that time, snowboarding was getting big. Snowboarding mm. was the money maker. So it's like we couldn't get them out to film. It'd be like me and Marcel going to the Encinitas YMCA skate park and skating that or just filming with my brother. He wasn't really doing anything. And it was just me and Marcel doing whatever, like nothing. So it wasn't going anywhere. Is that when Brian Emmers was on? He got on after. So uh -huh. there was a video called Evil Black and black and back oh okay yeah yeah something like that and then uh emmers got on there was another video that emmers was on after. that one was good too yeah mm -hmm. i can't remember what video it was though mm -hmm. yeah then, then you do you get him on uh plan b after that too because he ended up riding for plan b he was in the well, Emmers. brian emmers yeah i think he was just in the mix like i i don't um, i didn't meet him back then but uh because he wasn't in secondhand smoke but he right. was in revolution yeah right. mm -hmm. revolution was like three years later though right mm -hmm. Or maybe two years. Yes. Oh, two yeah, years? it was yeah. like 94, 95, 96, 97. So the board was weird. It was just like, all right, I don't want to be pro. And it's like, okay, you're not pro. But then later, throughout the years later, I hear like, oh, I remember I had your board through Evil. And I was like, I was never pro for them. They're just like, yeah, you had the baseball board. So I'm sure they were still selling the board to shops. Right. Because <laughs> me, I'm a little kid. I'm thinking skateboarding just around here. I didn't know how big worldwide or whatever. Mm, right. But then there's people out there like in Wisconsin where Mayhew and them from their and Schneider, and they're just like, no, we had your boards. We sold a lot of them. Wow. Did so he kept it out of, like, out of sight for you guys to like not know. Or you just believe it. You're just like, oh, you want to be pro? Okay, you're not pro. We're not going to sell your board. But, but the boards didn't have the names, but the ad did. Who else yeah. was on the, the – who else had the boards? Uh, probably Jason Rogers, mm -hmm. Alfonso, and one other person. I forgot their name. Oh, that's interesting. And I remember those graphics. They were like uh, stretched out, right? So it yeah. went all the way the length of it. So like <clears throat> baseball – 
was like a long oval and the just the stitching came in right yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay i remember those oh yeah. so it's more like the pattern of the sh what, what it was yeah it was like a zoomed in stretched out version where it went the length of the board so it, mm. you know it just had the stitching of the baseball and then it had like the the laces of the football and so the you know what it, so you know what it was yeah. that kind of thing so i remember those so you never got the board like do you still have do you have one i had one but it was at my parents house board house got broken into board's gone so oh. i mean i have the ad so right. you can see it from the ad, but but we need the board, Pat. We need the board. This is your Someone's first pro it. model board, but it was, but it wasn't. I guess unofficial. I did have an amateur board with Marcel Johnson through Evil. Then that's a whole nother story too. But that's a funny story. What happened? So because it was an amateur model with both our names, it was like, oh, are we gonna get paid? And it was just like, oh, here's the money. It's like, oh, that's it. Well, both your names are on the board. It's the amateur board. You guys have to share the money. So yeah, the split, money got yeah. cut in half. <laughs> so I was like, uh, okay. How old were you? Probably still in high school. And S I had that 16, same situation. 15? Yeah, about. Okay. And you, how, how much did you get paid? I got $300. Nice. That's oh, not no, bad, no, though. No, maybe I got 150 Maybe it was just like right. a number. Oh, 300 boards sold. So you get 150 Marcel gets 150 mm. That sounds more right because I had the same yeah. thing with Blockhead where they had had a board out. It was coming out. It was called Love for Sale. Mm -hmm. And it just had like a, almost like a lingerie ad style thing that said love for sale. And it said uh, Labanessa for Laban. And then it was supposed to be for Dan Rogers, but Dan Rogers left. So they just put my name in there. So it said Labanessa and Jeremina. And it was our, it was my first board with anything with my name on it. And I didn't even see it until it was out. And I'm like, what is this? I didn't sign up for this, you know? And but same thing, they're like, well, here. And they split the royalty because it was me and Laban. And I think I got like $126 or something like that. Wow. Yeah, somewhere, am, somewhere in that range. Like, an that is funny. Board. Wow. Skateboarding yeah. pays. Make a living. <laughs> I mean, that was your first paycheck, though, probably as a, as a 15 year old. I mean, you're still in high school. Yep. Better than a paper wrap. So it's then true. when you get over to Plan B, how did you feel good about this rebuild situation? I mean, they still had a great team. I'm not uh -huh. saying that they didn't, but they were. You had a lot of, like. They lost a lot of people. You got a lot of, right. like, th that's. They they heavy hitters half. too. Yeah, they lost about half of the team. Yeah, heavy hitters, and you got a lot of uh, what do they say? Like shoes to fill, I guess you would say. Or, oh yeah, big yeah. shoes to fill. Yeah, and yeah. they're having yeah. a video right away too. Secondhand smoke. We went right into filming for the next video. Yeah. But then uh, right around that time, Danny also broke his neck, so mm. he broke his neck surfing, and he right. wasn't able to film a part. So that put extra pressure on us just to film as much as we could and make our parts good. But, By the um, way, it, it, there's the hold on, hold on, hold on. No. I was tripping on this. You nollie heel flipped over this bench. Was there a bump there? There's a little bump there. It's like one of those very, spots. Very, it's a, it's a, slight, okay. it's a slight bump. It's like okay. it, it goes up. There's a crack right there. Right. And then it, it's that, that's a spot in San it, Diego. It's more right? like yeah. time yeah. by yeah. flat ground. Well, I was, just, I was watching this earlier yeah. and I'm like, dude, 1994, this man is he, nollie heel flipping over a bench. That's still on legit. Flat, that's legit on, I didn't know if there was a bump there. Okay. Sorry. Carry on. Barely. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's just like mind thing. Yeah, but still. Yeah. Great knowledge. Switch for heel. Uh, that was wow. amazing. So, what, which video is this from? This is secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke. Okay. Yeah, it was switch front heel five zero. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. So, did you have any? I mean, you were, went right into filming this, right? Yeah, I mean, when I got on, it was more of like here's Squashbox, so start filming with this guy. So I don't mm -hmm. even know if I was on, but it was kind of just like just film and film, and then it ended up being a video part. Okay. Yeah. So is that it less pressure, you think? Just filming? I mean, I'm filming. I'm just trying to do whatever I can just so I could get a spot on the team to show them what I can do. Mm -hmm. Was Evil already done at this point? For me, it was. Okay. So that whole thing was just like... So, I mean, Tony and Mike, they used to be partners. So mm -hmm. me being a little kid not knowing anything, everyone quit Plan B, and they're just like, hey, looks like a spot opened for an AM. So... The mini ramp was there. We're able to go skate the mini ramp because they had a mini ramp down south. And then I would be down south too. And then it was me and Marcel. Then we just got the courage to be like, hey, are you looking for some riders? Or one left. Mm. And then me not thinking he knows Tony, they ended up talking. And that's how they saw the footage, I think, of what I had over there. And me not mm. even knowing anything, thinking one plus one, they know each other. They're going to know what I'm doing, trying to get on another team. It's such a small world. Yeah. Really like, is. just think that nobody knows each other is amazing. But it's like, oops, they know. Right. Were they were they tripping on that at all or no? I mean, it I worked think, out. Yeah, I'd say it all you worked out. Were, yeah. You think they were <laughs> well, tripping? 
I think maybe Mike didn't want to do it because look, he took all the H Street riders yeah. to Mike Plan B. Yeah. Right. And then right. now he's gonna take another rider. So it's I like he's still that. taking, but I mean it worked out. I was happy. I was on my favorite team. They were my favorite mm-hmm. team growing up. So I, mean, I was virtual able to get reality on. questionable. Yeah. Man. Yo, this footage is crazy to watch right it now. Really I'm, so I'm kind of like in this conversation, but also having a really good I know, time I'm, watching I'm it. I know, I'm focused on it too. I'm, I'm <laughs> listening, but I'm watching that, and just everything's so smooth. I don't well, understand how you in For the heel. year, too. Remember how sketchy skateboarding was around this time? Yeah. That dude. is smooth. Smooth as hell. Like, like inward that. heel flipping upstairs, to me, that's like right. the hardest trick ever. But well, Who else has done switch 180 heel to 5-0? Yeah. I don't know of anybody. That reminded me of that little imperial spot that he did yeah, it on. Yeah, okay. You remember that spot? Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. Like I said in the intro, you were very precision, I feel like. You were very, I was watching your video parts and you weren't even, no skirting out, no tic tacking. You were just solid bolts, man. Definitely. I think it came from watching the other videos before me, like watching Plant Questionable. And it's just like, if it came down to it, when I was filming that part, in my mind, I was like, I can't have the suckiest part. I can't be the worst one on it because they just put me on. <laughs> when I feel like back then there was a really high standard for clean footage, you know? And if and anything style was sketchy too. at all, yeah. you, you would stylish. just do it again. Right. And like, if it didn't make the cut, it didn't make the cut. But like, yeah, it, 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 I feel like nowadays people get away with a lot. Yeah, you know, this there's some true. loose, loose skateboarding out there. Yeah, so I feel like true. at this time too is when I think pops really started to come around. Yeah. yeah, people started to actually pop their trick. People would ollie up things or whatever. Right, the but pop, you, flip, and catch technique. Yeah, because yeah. when you watch that that part right there, it mm-hmm. stands out a lot different than any other parts at that time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm sorry to gas you up, but I grew up watching <laughs> skating, so I trip out. Like my one of my favorite video, I'm a four in one guy. Issue 34, your profiles in there. Okay, thank you. I would watch that every day before I went. To, uh, I was in junior high. Nice. And I this part is any skater that the souls of mischief. And this no, look at this nollie heel. I know, dude. Yeah, all these safety this, lines dude. are so good, man. And that's what I'm saying is like, mm. I, like the outside looking in, you were like this stylish, solid skater you know what i mean like nollie heel flipping over stuff like that's how i wanted to nollie i wanted to nollie heel flip the sand gaps and over the thing and over a bench you know and it wasn't like this like it wasn't like you you were going to for for like gnarly power you were just casually going and then you had all this pop it was really like interesting to watch like you can't really comment on anything you're probably like wow thank you guys (laughs) but (laughs) no please comment (laughs) What what do you think about that i mean at the same time it's like I grew up watching videos, so whatever I see in the videos, what I liked, I'm trying to skate like them. Right. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'll see Jerron, you know, when he was doing his line at Los Feliz, it's like, dude, look, 10 tricks. Oh, yeah, and yeah. then he does, like, switch stuff, too. Then he goes over the hip. It's like, I got to do stuff that he's doing, so mm-hmm. I got to try to catch up with everyone else. Right. Well, Who- you did a damn good job of that, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> who's, one of, who's a big influence on you growing um, up? Well, the first video, I would say, is questionable, so that was my favorite team favorite video so at one point like a certain guy would be my skater then the next week another guy in the video part his skater so it's like okay i want to be chefy i want to be fabry now danny now colin right <laughs> so it's like, now rick now mike and that's yeah. how you got so well-rounded because yeah you don't repeat a lot you got a, mm-hmm. a, like a good mix of tricks and it all looks like you're comfortable so i love this line right here too that last one right there where he, he turns around mid mid line yeah you never saw anyone do that and you were like people would be like whoa that's crazy but you made it look so casual that it looks cool i think some totally. people still give me stuff like if i try <laughs> to do it nowadays they're like well how are you gonna go backwards i was like i'm just turning my port around they're like, yeah you can't do that. <laughs> and i was like if you're skating you can do whatever you want yeah, there's no turn around dude. No was, yeah I don't watch know. me. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were in a bunch of 401s. I have to bring this up since we're talking about 401s because like, I, th- I to me it's funny and I still trip on this. Listen, we've talked about the water tower Ollie and everything. We've talked about it on this show. You've talked about it. Jankum just did a thing on it. Like it's been talked about. Yeah. But I still think it's funny that this monumental trick was just in a 411 like chaos no, section. No, it was the industry section. Industry it, it was, section. Yeah. It was in the Plan B industry section and it's because we were going to do a greatest of Plan B video mm-hmm. and uh, that was all the footage that was going toward that and then just to introduce that because at the end of that industry section it said best of Plan B video coming soon. That's what that was for. But I just think it's yeah. funny because it's a, it's the gnarliest trick over this crazy death it's it's 
It's gnarly. Evil Knievel yeah. shit, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? But then it was just this 411. Right. Like, it wasn't an ender in this monumental audio video or this... Right. It, it wasn't this monumental ender. It was right. just a, it just flew by in a 411 industry. Well, and that's the part that was after the Revolution video. So all the stuff I was filming around that time would have been for the next Plan B video. And that part would have been the best part I had ever put out. Because I was getting some gnarly stuff done that I'd always been looking at. And I finally had time to do it. I had people around who wanted to film. Getting a photographer to shoot it. And then um, as far as that thing, what's happened since the last time I was here, mm -hmm. they had a a voting through the magazine for the greatest thrasher cover of all time. Okay. That was it. That dude got number one. Hey, uh, <laughs> congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. Well oh, deserved. As like, you should. And I was thinking like, I never got skater of the year or anything like that, but they do come up with a new skater of the year every year. And there's another one, another one. There's only one greatest thrasher true. cover of all time. Bro. And so far true. that's the one. So do you still so have any true. like mem or the board you skated there or anything from that session? You know what? That came up recently because they were looking to do a card through that ABD with Mike. Well, yeah, I'm just gonna yeah. say, and yeah, they wanted a piece of that board, and uh, I know that that board was in my garage in a stack of other used boards, mm. and uh, someone at some point might have gone through looking for a board that wasn't that roughed up to use to skate, and I think someone just oh, set no. it up and skated it because nah. it it wasn't super beat up because it chipped the tail on the bottom when it you know, when it fell off the whole thing <laughs> yeah. and they were trying to throw it up to me, but they couldn't get it up there. So when it chipped the bottom, I took it apart after we finished that day, you know, I just put on a different one, yeah. wow. but I knew which one it was by the chip on the tail. And I, I knew exactly where it was in my garage and just had a few things just go missing randomly. Just, you know, a used board. Mm. They didn't know what they had. Going back to the, the, all the best plan B video part mm. you were about, about to have, all that footage got dispersed into a bunch of different projects. Yeah, and That's, some of it right? ended up in like Transworld videos, mm. some of it ended up in that 411 thing, and it just got sprinkled out everywhere right. so god man. Yeah, i mean it we, got seen but it does yeah. it does it's on uh, it's but it's different when it's all together yeah. Set yeah, yeah, yeah. To the, the music that you want and all that stuff so like at some point i'll probably just put it all together myself the way it should have been and uh just you know you actually should that would be great yeah, that would be dope because it really yeah. didn't get seen you know what I yeah mean? and there's like, lots of stuff that, that when it got separated into all those different videos not everybody saw everything so yeah. like put it all together it just more impactful let's get know? on yeah. that yeah. let's do that that's doable I but talked it, to Roger about it a while back. Okay. Let's get some stuff going. Let's go. You know? Yeah. I, footage. I just think yeah. it's I just think it's funny that that trick was just in a 411 right. industry. And it, <laughs> that to me is a ender ender right. of a video part. Well, and a lot a of people gnarly... don't even know who it was in that because it didn't say the person's name <laughs> as it goes by. So it's just like, you know, if you didn't uh, know and you're not super big in the right. screen, so I know. mean oh, I, I mean yeah. I was heavy 411 guy and right. I, so I knew Right, but like everyone was watching four ones back then. I feel, not, right? And that's not to say that it it wasn't this big thing back then. It was just mm -hmm. I know I know exactly what you're ender. saying. So I'm glad. Yeah, but it wasn't a dun 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 dun. It wasn't dun, even that. That's, that's crazy. crazy. It wasn't even that's, that. That's, that's kind of crazy. True. Yeah, because yeah, that's true. like perfect. The slow mo of ro like rolling right. up to that. The, Wait, that did you have a dun dun dun? I had, the, I had the first dun dun dun. Four one one number one. Which surprising? What did you do? It was a kickflip over this bump to gap with a rock in it in Huntington Beach. Oh, okay. next to the right skate across park. from where the skate park used yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But yeah. before the skate park was even there. But yeah. it was yeah, just right there. That was the first dun dun dun. Yeah, that was the and, first uh, dun dun dun. <laughs> the story on that one, we had gone there with Ortiz and shot a sequence of it. And we got a good kickflip <laughs> caught up to my feet where the tail comes up and smacks you. Got a really good one. And then we go to film it, get kicked out. It's all right, we had to come back and get footage. So we came back a different day and I got that skipper one where the nose stayed up and it like barrel rolled and I mm. still made it. It was like, I went back to do the next one, got kicked out again. 411 comes out, they used the bad one because oh. that's the only one we had. Wow. And back then that was considered good, but I knew the difference even back then. I'm like, that was a bad, bad kickflip. I would have never used that in a video. Right. And it's the first trick in 411. So for, for life, dun, 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 that's the way that thing looks. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, I remember and that. And I know the dun, difference, dun, 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 you know? For sure. And the other one that I got there before I got that one was perfect. So it's like, Ugh. you know, I that's gotta a, live with it. That's no super cool. You had the first trick in 411. Yep, Didn't you have the first profiles also? Yeah, because it was the same uh, issue. And the first cover. Yep. I had that and in my house. Originally, that was going to be all Mark Gonzalez. They wanted Gons to do, you know, the first profile and all that stuff. And I think somewhere when it was all coming together, he's like, you know what? Let me see how this goes first, <laughs> and I'll come back around to it. And he did. He yep. got his profile later and did all that and got his cover. Mm -hmm. But uh, he wasn't too sure. And I was just right place, right time, already working with Ortiz a lot. Because Ortiz was shooting photos with us a lot, and he's just 
Like, all right, if you want it, let's go. And we were just, I think we already had the footage. So only had to do a couple other things and it was already ready to go. And I was filming for the color part at the same time. So I think it all just worked out. Definitely. The color part, right? Pat, when you, how many uh, openers do you have? I know you had at least one, but was there? I think they, I probably had two same tricks. Switch front heel, the brick town. And then switch front heel over a table. At That's the right. Yeah. What, what, mm. what issue? Do that, we know? Um, I know 34 was the one you switched front heeled, I think, right? Bricktown. Yeah, because that was your profile. Is that in the, that's a big switch front heel, too. Yeah, especially back then. That, that was, was 11? 10, sir. That feels like a 12, but yeah. Because <laughs> you land on bricks, It feels too. like 100. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those, those bricks, like, really, really stop you. You land and you stomp and you just get... Could you slide on them, though? That was oh, yeah. little, on those ones, slick? you could slide. The yeah. new ones, now, you you get hurt on the new ones. Yeah. Right, here we go. What, they resurfaced the bricks? They did, yeah. Is it a bigger gap or something, or...? It's a real bricks Damn. that are Ooh. shiny. Yeah, that's that's how you do it right there, bro. That's how you switch from. Oh, they're like yeah. the dry bricks now. Yeah. Wow, dude, that's so good. I think P. Rab must have found that you're the Man. way you do it because he does it exactly like that. Yeah, too. he must have watched you. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. Rock will do everything. Look at this. Anybody listening to the podcast got to go watch this. That was the hot. It still is the hot spot now, but that was like you got a trick. You did it on that. You're you're doing it. Oh no doubt. And to get a dun da da out of it that's what i'm saying like that was a dun 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 was the more nose even comes up yeah like dude. the way it flipped oh, and came over it yeah. yeah it's like the nose even came up would would tricks Good come cut. easy to you or were you that. more of a workhorse when it came to this kind of stuff it's hit or miss i mean for me the way i grew up skating i skated a lot of flat ground so i based it oh it's a flat ground trick mm -hmm. so kind of like jeremy style go do it on something smaller okay then when you're ready mm -hmm. go for it gotcha. so me watching him do all his stuff is how I was able to do my stuff. So that's why, like, he would do everything perfect. And it's like, well, I got to do everything like him. Mm. When it works like that, if you do it down like a three stair, you can do it down that right after and you catch it the same way. You're just in the air for more yeah. and maybe you got to go a little faster, but it's the exact same motion. <laughs> yeah. it, doesn't sound like it, it really is. No, like once, that. once you learn how to catch it right, right. that's it's just it. It's about the pop and catch. Yeah. And the rest is just going a little faster. You're falling a little further. You can do it down to Toro after that. It's why fine. Not? Yeah. That might be the limit. <laughs> you know? In theory, yes. Yeah, because yeah. the same way when we were skating the um, Santa Monica triple set, the day I went for the back heel, there was like a three stair off to the side, and I just back heeled that a couple times, mm -hmm. and then went over and got the back heel on the triple, and it was not that big of a deal. You guys would skate a lot together during... Uh, when is the time when you guys were skating the most? Is it Secondhand Smoke or Revolution? Probably all Both the way the through videos. Secondhand yeah. Smoke and Revolution okay. and everything in between. So when it came time to put out a video, I think we had already just filmed a bunch of stuff <laughs> yeah. and we're sitting on stuff. Cause it would, it, it, same I, spots, if you look at the videos, we're probably... We both got tricks at the same places. Yeah, we did. We skated a lot of the same spots okay. during both of those videos. And just, yeah, our parts weren't back to back, so you didn't really notice as much. Maybe not but. the water tower gap, though, huh? <laughs> he wasn't there that what day. What do you mean, Katina? He <laughs> flipped yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Just didn't get I, filmed. I had a smaller water tower. <laughs> <laughs> but also the... Um, yeah, oh God. You, but you were skating. So You guys were skating different spots. Remember the wall you were skating? It was a ba basically a building. You were skating a first oh, floor building. Nose School. grind. Yeah, yeah. Tail slide. You five were there for grind. Some of that, right? You'll see me in the background. There's certain <laughs> things where uh, I'm a background, I'm a supporter guy. Yeah. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. I bring him the water. I grip his board. <laughs> he changes everything. Change out his yeah, because his brother Bilu filmed the nose grind. I oh, remember really? he filmed a couple of those things. Yeah. yeah uh, were you guys on your own mission kind of back then and like filming for the Plan B of the Revolution video? Were you guys like, was everyone skating together or were you guys out your own doing your thing? Well, I think we were together because we lived by each other. Mm -hmm. Other people were down south, so we were over here. Mm -hmm. And so we'd go down there and skate go. with them yeah. and film with them, but they didn't come up to our area mm -hmm. very much, right? Yeah. But yeah, I was used to going down to San Diego because most of the sponsors, most of the things were in San Diego, and you were probably used to that too. We used to take the Amtrak down there and get picked up at Oceanside and just, you know, that's back in the blockhead days yeah. for me. We just Amtrak it down there before we were even driving. So I was used to going down there almost every weekend. Yeah, but, and um, I went down there with my brother. My brother had a car. So then yeah. I would just go down there. Then over at t Mag's house, it's just like I would meet up with Marcel. Marcel probably lived there. Who knows? Tony's mm -hmm. never there. So we could basically, we're in high school and can do whatever we want. Free house. Damn. Mm. That's crazy. 
Yeah. Amtrak is so fun. I took the Amtrak down there a couple times. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad ride. It's not a bad ride. Yeah. Well, it's very Have scenic. a couple, couple yeah. p- packs of pretzels on the way down. You know, yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice when the person is there when you get there. Right. You know, sometimes they're not there for a while. They're busy doing something, and that was before cell that phones. Before so you just got to wait it out until you see someone you know. Yeah. So Where is this dude at? Man? Yeah. I'm supposed to be here. here for, you know. Yep. Pat, I want to ask you a question. Did you have a lot to do with your video parts, like Plan B? Did you like the music and all that stuff? Did you have? A- um, I mean, like at that time, I wasn't really into music. So especially secondhand smoke, mm-hmm. they're like, "What music do you want?" And it's like, I don't know. All I did was skate, so I didn't have time to listen to music. Okay, my music was watching other skate videos. So me at that time, I didn't really listen to the stuff. All I wanted to do was skate. So all I did was skate. And they had a hard time finding music for me. But I feel like they honed yeah. in when they, you know, like, like hip hop, like Souls of Mischief mm-hmm. or that, that like hip hop kind of really suited you. Yeah. So that was more towards like 411 and stuff. Mm-hmm. But then a lot of that stuff, like my cousin Pele, then my brother, like they were listening to that stuff. And then even watching the other Plan B videos, like Mike Carroll doing all the hieroglyphics. And it's yeah. like, mm-hmm. right. It's, I started to listen to that stuff. And it's like, it was from skate videos that, the music I learned, you know? Right. So well, I listened I feel to like all types of music. you did pretty good as far as video part music goes. No, 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 I, no, no, I think no. you there's did one right. part. There's one part. No. Pig Wheels. Oh. What? I don't even remember Pig what's, Wheels. So what's all, song? Sy- all systems go. Pig Wheels, you have a part in there. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. what? And it was this punk music. It was oh. crazy. And it just didn't fit your style. I feel like Pig Wheels probably just did right. whatever they wanted. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? It sounds, <laughs> more of a just, sounds about right. They had mm. a big team and it was like, hey, give us footage. That was it. And then they put me on the box cover. I didn't even know I was going to have the box cover. Oh. And then I had a part and it's like, well, if I knew I was going to be on the box cover and have a part, maybe I would have filmed a little harder. Oh, it was like just kind of throwaway footage? But they or not really this, then. Listen, it was a minute part. Let's, we're watching it right so now. So like, part? Okay. I mean, I wish we could play the music for you, but right. uh, we'll play it after. It was yeah. this punk music, and it just doesn't fit Pat Shanita. I'm used to watching Pat Shanita with the hip hop and the great <laughs> music, and here comes this like... Does it say what band it was Extraordinary punk. Listen, here. We'll, we'll, we, we can, let's see if we could play it, but we can't put it on the uh, <laughs> Right, because I'm curious you what could, song it was. Wait, we can't put it on the edit, so Tim, right. just uh, close this track up. You could totally tell this is all like your throwaway oh, footage. I, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of similar spots from the other part. Oh, There we go. <laughs> let's see. Hold on. But this, come on, is that, but, is you're, that, you're absolutely right. That does not is fit that the skating Pachinita? at all. I no. mean, it's not Pachinita, but if it's brand, it's on brand for right. Pig Wheels. That's I don't recognize the, the band. <laughs> I don't know who it is. We can't put it in the edit, yeah. but God, just look How up, funny. look up uh, Pachinita Pig Wheels, All System Go. So or we I could take pretend it, it didn't happen. Well, yeah. the other part. <laughs> right. But you, the, you had the but one, that, the Oasis song in the, right. in Revolution. Did you right. choose that? Cause that one's really good. We choose that. Uh, it was like me and my brother. Um, so I like their music. I like. I didn't Noel realize. Yeah, I didn't realize that was Oasis when I heard it. I mean, I didn't know I was a little kid. And Bilu used to play some of those Oasis songs on his guitar. He even yeah. taught me how to play Wonderwall. I think on the. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I'm saying, yeah. though, is you had such good songs, mm-hmm. and then I mean, I never, you know, it's Pig Wheels. It could have been but... Chance. You never know. Well, we can say that Pat did not choose that song. That's well, why I was asking. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I or maybe you did. Tomiato video. They right. Tomiato has a certain style, probably. Exactly. Yeah, so. I, I'm just thinking. You just send them the footage. It's your hey. This is mm-hmm. my whatever footage. Uh, not, not, it's not whatever, but I know you're filming for something else. Mm-hmm. Like you see, like tricks. You nollied the, the eight stair, like whatever. I'm like oh yeah, he's like fakey flipped that and all this. Like around the same time. Yeah. So well, and and listen, one got point, one got by you, Pat. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, right. well, what I mean? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> just pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> but they needed the rights for music at that point, right? You see? That was, I don't yeah. think so. Well, Pig wheels? At that's the same one. At some point, they started needing to have the rights, and that's when music and videos got really bad. Yeah, Because it was just choosing from whatever they had a catalog that they were allowed to use. So I ended up with some mm. strange ones Especially with 411, that. though. Yeah. Like they 411, had they, they'd catalog. have bands even sending catalogs and stuff, and mm. they'd have like... You know, the record company sending, yeah, use anything because it was promotion for them. Yes. And there were some just random songs. Some what, of them's to the test of time, but not all of them. What about this, Pat? You got, uh, so you said uh, Secondhand Smoke was just kind of you filming 
Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. kind of maybe not knowing if you're going to be in the video or not what about revolution of course now you know you're filming for revolution with more pressure um i mean the pressure is going to be on me at this point i was just like well i had my first part now maybe people are paying attention like for me i was trying to do everything i possibly can in this part okay at least filming wise and then whatever gets put in gets put in so this is me trying probably as hard as i can try which part did you like better um for yourself they're both different in their own because they're different tricks sure um the comments i get the most about are probably going to be 411 yeah <laughs> okay but i feel maybe the hardest tricks i did was maybe revolution mm. Mm. as far as s- skill wise okay I, mean, I feel like not as many people saw the revolution compared to secondhand smoke because when that one came out, I think it was at a time when there were less videos out too. And yeah. just seems like everyone saw secondhand smoke I, and watched it religiously. And when revolution came out, it was just a few years later and it just wasn't. I think it was as, distribution. There was more. I kind of have to agree. Had something to do with it for sure. I have to agree with you. There was a yeah. lot of videos coming out around this time. Right. Mm-hmm. Like rhythm video came out. This came out. Uh, like, yeah. It kind of got lost in the sauce a little bit. Mm. A little more. Yeah. Yeah, a little more. Yeah. I mean, I saw it. Yeah. Ooh, there's that heel. Wait, did, <laughs> were you, did you yeah. ride for Dukes at all? Or is he just getting shoes? Or is, he rode for I Dukes. I rode for Dukes. Okay, so wait, Jeremy obviously had the shoe. Yeah. But, uh, so you was it just you two on there? No, um, we had a squad. Time, and, yeah, uh, Jerry Fowler, Rick J. Rick J. Oh, oh, yes. Yep, Pat Duffy rode for Dukes for a while, too. I think Bertino. Rodney yes. Mullen rode for Dukes. Didn't uh, Skechers rip you guys off pretty hard? Yes. That was kind of a gnarly thing. And they actually took the entire design, because that was my design from scratch. Like, I got the drawings that go all the way back from just even the texture, the bottom of the sole, the pattern. We did certain things that hadn't been done in in footwear before, like with the dual durometer for the the heel and the toe. They had like a, a harder rubber on the heel and toe, so they lasted longer. And then just even the stripe on the side of the sole had never been done. And... I have the samples where we have the stripe like sticking out and they have to hand paint each one. And then when I skated it, it wore the paint off. (laughs) So I was like, well, what if we indent it? So we just indented that little stripe and then they had to paint in there and then it lasted longer and stayed on. So like, perfect. So I have the samples that go all the way back to prove that we did that for a cup sole first to have that stripe in there. Was there any type of like litigation or suing going on at that time when that happened? What they did is they stole the entire design. I think they even used the same factory and just used our molds, used our everything, and then just put a Skechers logo on the side. And then I was told that you can't copyright a design. You can only copyright your logos. So since they removed our logos and put theirs on, there's nothing we could do. What? And it's like, I don't know if that's true. And these days, I don't think that would fly. You know? no. But you no weren't way. But you were behind. They ripped it off 100%. But you weren't behind the scenes and when that was going on, were you? Like, you didn't know what was going on. I was at the trade show when they dropped the Skechers shoe. And okay. I went up like, what is this? You know, and talked to him about it. <laughs> I mean, this is <laughs> kind of, I don't even know what it is. This is kind <laughs> of yeah. bad, but this is, the, this is the Duke's shoe we're talking right. about. That is fresh. That is a yeah, clean looking shoe. That is a really, really dope. I'm bummed I never had What year was this, by the way, Jeremy? 94 or 95. I think it's probably 95 when it came out. Looking pretty slimmed down. Yeah, no, they at were that slim. time too. They had a good... Uh, Thin insole, like midsole, and they had a good board feel. They were nice and flat, they were nice and nice. they were actually shaped like your foot, mm-hmm. where they're not too narrow. They don't crunch your toes or anything. And just the materials, we had good materials, and I made sure the layering was in a way that it didn't hit your grip and just fold down, so you wouldn't have anything blowing up on you. So you really had to wear all the way through that material to get to your sock, you know? Right. So it took a long time to get through it. Even like when the stitching was gone, it was glued in place, and it had another layer behind it. So I wanted them to look good and be simple and last a long time, mm-hmm. which was kind of rare for the era. Did you end up saving a few pair? I have one pair left that's in my size, and you know I still have the box and stuff. But yeah, I've, just go I've get worn the sketches around. one; it's fine. Exactly. <laughs> well, after Dukes sold, they were uh, Dukes got sold to a holding company in Canada, and they were selling them out of Big Five. So a lot of my friends that still love the shoe couldn't get them anywhere else. Were getting them at Big Five for like twenty bucks. Wow. Yeah, they were just still rocking them. And they had already made some design changes, made them cheaper, like got rid of the, the midsole that we put in there, made like some kind of waffle system that they'd wear out a lot quicker, but they looked the same. 
So if you weren't skating in them, you wouldn't notice. But at that point, they're but, not really designed for skating, though. Right. At that point, they were just a style shoe that was getting blown out. So, What happened with... Uh, you were on... What did, did you go from Dukes to anywhere from then? Were You, you were uh, Nike when it first... I was with Nike for like a year. When it first kind of came into the, yeah. the skate scene. I think they scene. had... I think Choppy Omega. Yeah. Wow. So he was... He might have been like... The first. Kind of like the first line. Yeah. And then there was... Us with like uh, Bam and stuff was like another mm-hmm. second run before SB came and took over. That How, was like years later. Though. Yeah. How did yeah. they hit you up for Nike though? Like, um, they had you know what? I think Remy Stratton wow. ended up being the team manager. I don't know if it was him. Somehow I got in the mix. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If it was from. I don't know how, but I got in the mix. This was after Dukes. Yeah. So you were because I was a- still on Plan B when I was riding for Nike. You know, those were skating like those mid-top looking shoes. Yeah, they had a couple different models, like strictly for skating. Yeah. They also had that one that laced up the inside, like a soccer shoe or something, where it's like the laces weren't centered on your foot. They were like more towards the inside, so you wouldn't break them on a... Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. It was it was the weirdest design. I remember seeing those like, what is going on with these things? More on the inner yeah, side of the Yeah, they're more on the inside, so yeah. you wouldn't break them on your grip tape, which I mean... In it theory, makes sense. it makes sense, yeah. but man, it was just not the best looking design. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the first you know? iteration of Nike trying to come into skateboarding. Right. This yeah. is they had Pachinita, they had what you said Bam. We had Bam. I think we had Jaya, Sergio Jaya Ventura. Bonner, okay. Wow. Yeah. Remy. And was Gino on in that round? No. No. Because he got on later, but he was on early before all the SB stuff too. So I well, think that he was, was with SB, like him, Richard, Rich- Reese. Right. Mm. But I think he was on before that and then got, you know. Yeah. put in with those guys but i remember him getting some early on too and he had a colorway and stuff how yeah i do remember yeah. how, how long did that last though the nike sb stuff for me oh, it i had a nike one-year S- contract it wasn't sb though it was just oh, yeah, i'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. this was before all this stuff this was right this is when they were first trying to nike get in skateboarding. they didn't even have the dunks they didn't have anything they were just had these shoes that were kind of designed for skateboarding yeah. that were kind of not chode. that good oh, yeah, right. yeah, oh yeah. here what is this called the chode the chode yeah it looks Oof. like the chode. They had a, yeah, a, a shoe good. called the chode. <laughs> yes, that Descri- was the first described one. perfectly. This isn't. This is not the shoe that it, it wasn't called the chode. I didn't skate that shoe, but I mean they had shoes, maybe similar designs. Well, and the ad I remember was Choppy Omega doing a board slide on something, and the way it was cropped, you couldn't even tell where he started, where he ended, or anything. Mm-hmm. And there was like a cartoon drawing of a dude and a girl, and it said, "Honey, what's a chode?" That was the <laughs> ad, and it was like, yeah, and wow. it was like. I'm looking at that in a skateboard bag. Like, what a is? Ad. And this is a Nike ad. What yeah. is going on here? That's who, a good you know? way to come into the industry, right who there. Who is yeah. running this yeah, show? Yeah, I just there. couldn't help but like, I know all this different stuff. What is this? And like, I didn't know where that Dude, came from. Dude, it's a new Nike uh, Nike Chode shoe. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. That, that was shit, wild. That shit looks so, so budget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. That shit, it does. Well, so this, this is was after when, though, because oh. like Choppy, I would say oh, was one generation, and then there was another generation after, which I want to say was like. I was on and bam and stuff. Go back to that last one, or was this the one that one you were skating? No, because well, one looked like that. There was one that looked like that. Okay. That was like a high top, mid top that I had in probably a couple of my lines. Were those little black right. stripes like rubber? Yeah, it looks like it. Like rubber teeth. Yeah, coming it, up? it looks yeah, like they're, it. They're rubber, but I think okay. this one was before I was on. That's right. before. Mm-hmm. So, so when you got on, yeah. they were cleaning it up a little bit, or was it still? They were kind trying of... to clean it up. They were talking to us with ideas and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it wasn't working out and they still wanted to give people shoes, but they were going to kind of put it on pause. Okay. Because when my year contract was up, they're like, we still want to give shoes. And it was, for me, it didn't feel right. Cause I felt it was just like, look, we're not going to have like a team, a team manager for you to talk to. It was more of just like, you leave a message and we'll get to you when we get to you. <laughs> and then Who, was it just... Just business, call Nike. Business, just call Nike and leave a message. There was a phone number. <laughs> business people. I mean, and then I was just like, um, "Well, this other guy." Hello, this is Patch. And yeah, you know, like yeah. leave a message and then secondhand smoke so revolution. Are she's gonna come in a month later, a week later? There wasn't like someone dedicated to skateboarding, right. but they still wanted to give people shoes because I'm sure they knew down the line they were gonna give it another try. Mm. And then it came to the point where I was just like, "If someone pays me, are you gonna match an offer?" And, they're, and then I felt the attitude I got on the phone was just like, no, take this or not. Like, this is what we're going to give you. Like, what, what they didn't we, want to bargain. What was mm-hmm. the deal? I mean, it was what it was. 
for back then though was it like a good was it a good um, substantial or was it kind of just like ah uh, well I mean, this I is was, 20 years ago they, right? they didn't want to match what someone else was going to give me because it was mm-hmm. pretty much they were like this is what we're going to pay you mm-hmm. we're not going to match kind of take it or leave it which was kind of fine but at the point where there's no one to talk to or work with that was kind of hard which is like so i'm just going to leave a message and when you get to me you get to me so that felt kind of weird who mm-hmm. what company were they trying to match were you already getting an offer from another company? Was that Genetic Company? Because um, didn't you ride for Genetic? I rode for a sandal company before Genetic. Oh, And they were going to give me right. more money. You Wait, rode for Reef. Yes. Oh. Yes, that's right. Well, Reef was building a little team. Yeah, so they were building a little team. Yeah. And then... Um, and it wasn't a, a shabby a team either. They had a yeah. shoe too. They definitely. Didn't they? They had Did a they good squad. they have a decent one compared to those Nike ones? Um, they, I mean, they were working on it. They were working on a team. We had team riders and stuff, but I think there was probably a time from Nike and reef where I was on nothing. Cause I think right. I was, I was probably getting shoes from Soul Tech again. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Don was picking me up with shoes. And then reef and then comes along, but they had a good, they had a good team. I think they were really tr- doing well. They, they had a budget mm-hmm. and they were able to do stuff and they wanted to listen to people. So it was nice. Um, Aaron Astorian was the manager and then Amazing. he was easy to work with. So yeah. how does that work? So you're on Nike. You say, hey, will you match this offer? They say no. Is your contract just null and void? And you just go Well, brief? because it went up. Like I had a contract for one year. So it went from one date to another date. So that yeah. date was kind of up. And it was just like oh. renewal time. So okay. it was kind of like, this is what we're going to do. Then it was just like, well, I have no one to talk to. And what? then I just threw out, are you going to match if someone matches? And like the attitude I got was like, no, this is it. Take it or leave it. So it didn't sound good for me. It was take it or leave it mm-hmm. and no one to talk to. Talk to an answering machine. This was what year? Maybe 98, 97, 98 I probably. Say, yeah. I was going to guess 98. <clears throat> yeah, I was looking at it like probably around 98. Mm. I'm just so trying what to did think, you feel yeah. like? How did you feel? Because Reef was not in the skate game at all. Or neither uh-huh. was 90 really. Like how did right. you feel about going to, to Reef at that time? I think at that point in my so-called skateboard career, when Plan B was done, it was kind of like, well, I'm probably done because skateboarding wasn't something that was going to last a long time. So when they were done, like, I wasn't fielding too many offers. Mm-hmm. I was still going to school when I was still on Plan B. So I was just like, well, I'm just going to finish school and get a job. You were going for your BA, right? Yeah. So I was probably still in junior community college. And it was just like, and then I started riding for um, Bones Bearings when I was on Plan B. And... They asked me what I was doing, and then it was kind of like they kind of gave me an offer, which sounded better than the other offers that were kind of coming in. Mm. And then I was like, yeah, I guess I'll try it, because they were like, hey, you could still go to school. Then I was like, okay. Well, I was going to go to school anyway, so it's just like, <laughs> I guess this could help pay for school. For so sure. in a way, it was just like an informal, you could say, scholarship, because <laughs> <laughs> you got money to pay for school, but I was totally. skating. So it's just like if I took it that way, it was just like, well, all I got to do to skate, then I could pay for school. Were you going to school as a as a backup to skateboarding, or did you just really want to go to school? Or were um, you like, hey, I need something in case this I doesn't... I kept going. I don't know if it's an Asian thing, or it was just like, look, if I want to skate, uh-huh. like, I got to do school. It was just like, get your homework done, then you could go to school. I mean, uh, whatever. Right. Get your homework done, then you could go skate. And then from high school, it's just like, whatever, I already enrolled to the community college, and mm. I just kept going, because you didn't know how long it was going to last. And getting hundred fifty dollar checks, you know, that's not going to go too far. True, yeah. very true. true, man. Yeah, yeah, because a board company. I mean, Plan B. Wow, back then, so like fifteen hundred bucks. Oh yeah, um, a month, two thousand. So we back, were working with three thousand. I'm guessing two different then it people was, got paid it was, different amounts. Back also. then, it was okay. I mean, I felt when we were with Dwindle, I mean. We probably got paid differently, mm-hmm. but when we moved to a new distribution, I saw my paycheck drastically increase, and I was like, oh, wow. Oh, so it was increase. nice, because I think maybe we all got paid the same. Okay. Mm. But, did you guys get royalties back then, or just a flat rate? I think if we sold enough boards, we would go over, but my flat rate probably at that time was kind of high. I would have to probably sell a lot of boards which i don't know how many i think boards a lot of selling. people had a high number for those we had boards. A, a good flat rate back then for yeah sure. but to sell a certain amount of boards was like tough to do yeah i think they set the number pretty high so you wouldn't 
I remember hit Rodney so, hit me up when one of my boards took off, and it was mm. one of the Plan B ones where I did the graphic for it, and it was like just a smiley face, and he's wearing a tie. It was all just Sharpie drawing and pretty simple colors and stuff. But uh, Rodney was like, we actually had to reorder that board and make more of them, and I think they sold like maybe 1,200 of them or something like that, mm-hmm. which was pretty rare for the time because they were turning out boards every month, you know, and sometimes even more than one a month. Mm-hmm. So that was one of the ones he just noticeably like, yeah, he told me that one, that one hit. So that, was sure probably, that was probably the minimum 1200. I mean, yeah. they, I think they set them pretty high back yeah. then. I think it just was standard. Right. Like, but in, even then, I think we were only making like 500 of each deck, you know, and yeah. that one they had to reorder and do another round. That's dope. But I'd usually offer like more than one color in each graphic too. That's the guy right there. The second, second one. one from the left. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's tight. Who did you have a favorite board, Pat? Like that you had of your own model? Of my own model? Yeah. Um I mean, I think a lot of people know when I was on PAL, I had the penguin character. Oh, that's right. So it was easy to recognize what was my board. So I mean that became kind of one of my favorites. And then uh Plan B, I had models that I liked with guys holding guns and stuff or like a helicopter board. And okay. I had a spawn board. Like, I like those graphics too. Did you guys mainly ride your own boards back then or ride like your friend's pro models? Um, for me, when I didn't have a board, I usually rode his board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, when I was pro, I rode my board, so I always made sure the shape was the same one I rode. And then I felt... It looked better in a package if I'm doing a demo or something, because it's just like, well, if he's not writing his stuff, why should I write it? Oh, that's a okay. good way to think of it. Yeah. When I was torn, because I was going into the wood shop into Prime with Rodney and working on my shapes, so I would go in there pretty often with him and just dial it in and make certain changes. And I felt like the boards around that time were really exactly what I wanted, but at the time people weren't really writing their own boards, and they didn't want us writing blanks either. So I'd put in all this work, get the board perfect, try it out, it works great. When it's time to go film or something, I'd hop on like Fabian Alomar's board, you know, right. or I'd ride Gino's board. Yeah. Because they were like similar enough. And those were the ones, Rodney was working on those. And uh, he'd usually be trying something new out. And I'd try that one out too to see how it works. But yeah, I was like pushing my wheelbase a little longer. And I was actually bringing a little more size back because when we started doing the shapes in 94 with them, we were doing seven and a half, you know, which is really small for me because I wear a size 11. So that I, my toe and my heel were hanging off the board. Yeah. And you can tell in those early videos, people trip on my kickflip position. <laughs> yeah, but like, your kickflip you know, position, right? My heel is still hanging off while my toe's hanging off. It's just my, <laughs> my shoe is bigger than the board. You know? This guy's kickflips. So yeah. He did a trick it, tip, it by the way. He did a yeah. trick tip on how to kickflip. <laughs> Yeah, you confused a lot of people uh, yeah, with that no, one. Real. I was like, wait, is, well, I don't understand yeah. what he's doing right here. But I think exactly. we, I mean, we've <laughs> talked about this every yeah. time you come on the show. It's, yeah. it's, it is a humorous thing, right. though, because people do see you hang your toe hanging off the end right. of it. Would yep. you guys give him uh, shit for his kickflip? No, because if you look at my front side flip, it looks like a heel flip. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I hang like Are you picking his. it up from him? I <laughs> Probably pick everything up. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just need that extra shoe to flip with, you know? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> because I'd, I'd ollie it first and then get it to where I wanted it and then flip it late because you got to pick it up over whatever you're going over. That's one thing that I yeah. always could not do. And I would right. see a lot of people like yourself doing that is like this ollie first leveling out, yeah. flicking, and then catching it at this peak. Yeah, because if, you know I mean? if you flip it too soon, your board will hit whatever you're going over on the way up. So if you can hang on to it a little longer right. and get it high first and do the flip a little late, then you can get it up that there was and a, catch it. That was it a better. Jeremy Ray, you know, technique for sure. For sure. I had to figure it out. I figured yeah. it out in my own driveway in La Havre, just like trying to see if I can delay it as much as possible. But right. I kind of learned it from watching um, Jed Walters mm. and that, that kickflip on the third street bump in yeah. Santa yeah. Monica. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the way they did it slow-mo in the credits and he just hangs onto it to the last second yep. and then flicks it. And his still like the way it came up, the tail came up, but it came up late. Yep. So it's just a different way to do it. God, but you, it's you funny. always had a really good quick flip. And when Pat does a kick flip, the board stays close to his feet. It's like, as soon as it starts flipping, his foot just moves enough to get the board to clear. And it's already back on his back foot. Whereas mine, I feel like I get a little more distance and then it catches up. Mm. So there's two different techniques going on. That's the one. Yeah. This is the kickflip right here. Yeah. That's that such flip, a rad part. Just bro. for the time, that was really rare to see a kickflip that 
also, that got that high and caught that well above and then came down mm-hmm. with it because people were still catching up with their board on the ground back then mm-hmm. and doing pretty loose lazy kickflips so yeah. that one stood out kind of like your that full year. one opener kickflip exactly <laughs> yeah. and that one even people liked that thing you know but that didn't even catch my back foot the way it's supposed to we're all our own worst critic dude. yeah but i'm stuck with that one for life now but, but you I'm did okay. you had a good flick still you does. had a good Oh, I, I, yeah, thank you. Are you still, still skating? Does. Yeah, both yeah. you guys still so ripping. Sure. Yeah, we we went and filmed we, we today, try. and his flick's still there. Like, I love that. That's how we have to do is try, bro. At the end yeah. of the day, we're all trying skateboarding, man. We I mean, it's still it. fun. It's still fun for yeah. me. That's why I'm still out there. I mean, you did a bones forty, you're a forty four year old. But it's crazy because you're only 32. Yeah. So I couldn't <laughs> trick people. <laughs> no, but even that part was like I was like, dude. Thank you. Still it's got t- it, bro. W- listen, yeah. as as we start aging, it's it's tough. It, it gets harder. Gravity is real. Sucks us down. Yeah, we can't get up anymore. Seriously. Well, uh, who, are you skating with hoops a lot recently? I, I always see you um, getting clips with him, but here and there, because mm-hmm. I mean, I grew up skating with him, so he was in the area, and then somehow we started talking to each other. So if I have free time and he's got free time, we'll link up. I think with him, he only skates. Maybe on Saturday, and then I work, so I only have every other weekend, so it's hard for me to even get out. Oh, man. Well, as far as getting out with hoops, like, we've gotten out with him a couple times, but usually he can only go out on the weekends, and that's when my son Jackson usually has basketball or soccer games and stuff, so we don't get to cross paths that much. But uh, Mm. every time we do get out, it's nice, because when me and Pat go out, we just film each other. We've got a GoPro. I'll film him. He'll get his stuff first try. He'll film me. It'll take me a little longer than that. <laughs> but uh, I get mine in too. Usually he'll do something and then I'll try to do like something that complements it or the opposite or just get something on the same spot. Yeah. So like the other day he got his nollie heel up with step up and I was like, all right, I'll try the fakie one. And I was able to come through and get it. Dude, nice. fakie heels are so weird. Yeah. yeah especially a up a, a bad step up that has a little lump in it, you know, because mm. it, it ends up pitching you off before you even hit your tail. But if you can just relax through that and stay centered, you can get it. What, uh, where are you guys skating at usually Damn, these days? Is a sick Lots of local parks. Yeah, There's a couple of new ones down by your zone. Yep. They yeah. redid the Brea Park recently, so that one's been a lot of fun, but it's still got its issues. All the flat banks are all lumpy. They just, uh, I think the gravity set in before they like got hard uh, and they didn't resurface it. So like it's got these like wavy potato lumps in it told you man gravity's real yeah but all the transitions came out good it's like they had two different crews in the building they did someone worked on transitions got those pretty dialed in they're way better than they used to be and all the flat banks just aren't flat i love it man did you just decide to go out and film this like 40 for age 44 what's it called again 40 yeah i mean happy 44th birthday a lot of older people now it's just like they're like oh let's see we could still do it and film a birthday part right, right. and so i w- i tried to do one the last year and it's like i couldn't get out i got like two tricks so i'm g- probably gonna try to do one for my next birthday see what i could get up in one year okay mm-hmm. but it's definitely not gonna be 40 tricks it's gonna be more like let's see if i could get 10 tricks i you listen can't i do think with just, this bro i straight up man. he can get 10 tricks in one day and he can also get 10 tricks in one line in one day <laughs> probably first try i've been there i've filmed it and yeah he's still got it like that well, this wasn't wasn't forty four tricks though, right? This was just a, a part, or was this forty four um, tricks? This was whatever age I was. Okay, forty four. So, <laughs> so you did tried get the 44. to get forty four yeah. tricks, right? Listen, I don't know about the whole forty four for forty four, forty right. for forty, or forty. I just think there's just go film, just go skate. just come yeah, out with yeah. something be cool. Easier that way, yeah. right? I guess it gives you something to aim for, though. Yeah, that pressure. Well, that, when I did the forty five for my forty fifth, I just did them in my backyard. I had a mini ramp, yeah, and I would just did forty five <laughs> tricks that day on my birthday. And then uh, the last one, I just went off the roof into the pool. I did a front side 360 into the pool. You Amazing. did 45 tricks in one day? Yeah, but we, we didn't count it while we were doing it. And Jonas was helping me film it. So it was like, well, we don't, how many do we think we got? Well, I don't know. Let's do 10 more just in case. Wow. And we ended up with way too many. Oh. You know, Because if you got better ones, you could just switch it out. Yeah. Totally. But I think in the end, we just put it all together and didn't even worry about it. But we got the 45, and I just did the last one off the roof into the pool. Amazing. For fun. I think that's the last time I did the birthday one. Dude, Jeremy Ray, bro. You are incredible. Man. <laughs> yeah. Front side through 60s. I'm just saying, like, I feel like you... Like, you, well, like we're, let's talk about audio real quick. Because I feel like you are one of the type of guys in skateboarding that did so much for skateboarding and pushed skateboarding so far. And just with the... Just the, the amount of sh- stuff that you were doing back then. 
mm-hmm. um, I feel like you should have made a fuck ton of money. <laughs> no, you know what I mean though? Yeah. It's like, and I feel like back then too, maybe a shoe company like Audio would have been the way to do it. Like your pro right. model shoe, right? You had to fight for the fat laces. You, right. you probably made a lot of shoes. I mean, you probably made a, sold a lot of those, right? Yeah, and I think um, you learn something from each one you design. And I know that coming from Dukes and the simple, clean design, that thing skated good. I skated those for quite a while and loved it. Mm-hmm. Then by the time we got to designing audio, um, it's weird how that went because it was me and Jamie and Steve Barra um, as the original team for audio. And then obviously Chris Miller and Jose Gomez were there. Um on the back end doing their stuff. And Jose was doing a lot of designs, but he'd never designed shoes before. Jamie had designed one shoe with uh, America, I think. And I think Steve Barra hadn't designed a shoe yet. So everyone's kind of new to the game doing it. And we had that first run of samples come back and the quality was so bad. And I just was like, I don't know if I can do this. You know? <laughs> and I really what, not It was that it. first shoe with the one with the extended A? No, it was a different that, one. that was later that on was down later, the line. Later, yeah, later, the that's first ones came in, the, just, the factory just wasn't up to par from where I was coming from with even doing, you know, Dukes mm-hmm. it was not even close to the quality and you'd skate the samples and the rubber was real soft. It'd wear out real fast. And, uh, just the shapes of the shoes and everything. And just even down to the quality of the, the split leather just wasn't as good. So I went for a redesign on mine and then everyone else was going to drop their shoes. I'm like, mine's not ready. I'm not putting my name on that thing. So even if I don't have one in the original lineup, I'm waiting, I'm going to get this thing right. And we'll put it out when it's ready. And they gave me a lot of shit for that. But I was like, I, I'm sticking to this. I can't put my name on that. They're like, no, you can just have your next one be better. Nope. I'm coming from where I came. I know what's good and that's not it. So I'm going back in the I studio. Like I'm going to do it. Stuck with your guns. So yeah, I, I stayed around, got the next round of samples. It got better. And I think on the third round, I got it to where I thought it was ready. And we put that one out. And they had told me that was the first one that they got reorders on mm-hmm. for that too. That was their first one that had sell through and reorders. And it kind of helped them like, okay, at least we have one shoe that's a hit and now we can go from there. Kind and of, we just built on that. Told you so. Oh, I just had to get it right. I wanted <laughs> it to be something I would be proud to skate in and proud to put my name on and it yeah. just wasn't there. But when we got it there, it was ready. And then just going from there, from style, the style was a little more tech back then. So I wanted it to be tech enough, but still skate good, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And you can kind of have stuff that looks tech, but it doesn't get in the way of the skating. So I was working on just getting the right balance of that. And Happy then medium. as the models went, I was able to slim it down, get it cleaner. And by the time it got to the one you're talking about, that V4, yeah. that one was back to um, more similar to like a Duke style. Yeah. That was a V4. Just, yeah. yeah, V4 got cleaned up again and a little slimmer because everything was really puffy. I mean, we're talking like the D3 Osiris. <laughs> it's funny because you went from Duke's thinner to like right. puffed out. Exactly. And I was trying not to get too crazy with it. I kept it like, within reason. Were you they still were big? Were you nervous going into audio at first? Like, you're like, okay. Not until the samples came back. Because <laughs> I thought, like, with me and Jamie, we were the ones, because he had just left America, and I felt me and him together could do something really good. Yeah. And he's the one that brought uh, Barra in. And, uh, we were a good mix. That seemed to work out. And then uh, just when those samples came back, that's when I got scared. Oh. This is a bad photo. Because even but, like... But this is... What is this? It's two or the three mm-hmm. or the one? That's the what one. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. That's the one. Oh, interesting. It's kind of got... Where a, is that, the two? It's kind of got this Kenny Anderson toe piece a little bit. Well, that, the yeah, that, that one wasn't rubber, though, on that oh, toe. Okay, it was okay. just a different material that had some texture on it and... uh that represents yeah. that time of skateboarding. I think that's so actually well. the Big two. Time. That's is the second two? one. Yeah, it's a really bad uh, JPEG. That's of the it. back heel. But the V4 is one I'm talking about that right. really took off. Right. That was the one that really. And listen, when I when I when I prefaced you know making a fuck ton of money, I just think that there's certain people in the skateboard industry that deserve a lot, you know. And I think you're one of those guys that really deserve. Well, like, that's kind of what it comes down to is it doesn't matter how good you were on a skateboard. There were people making a lot more money that had a lot less skill on a skateboard. Totally. You know, 100%. It just, it just came down to who's doing your deals. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> but hey. I, I never had an agent through the whole thing either. So I didn't have anyone fighting for my money or anything like that. I just kind of had to do it myself. You probably made a decent amount of money, though. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you had yeah. to have yeah. with the shoe. Yeah, the shoe did well. That one specifically did better. But then even then, like. You know, we were getting paid quarterly, mm-hmm. and then they decided to do away with that quarterly payment thing right around that time that shoe was doing good. So they made me sign a different contract that said it was yearly now, 
and yeah. literally they spread it out over the year oh. and they were able to pay me like however much less by signing that i was like you know and it was kind of like same thing with pat take it or leave it mm. this is how it's going to be or what are you going to do yeah like that it, was, i don't have an option that was so plan b like, or element that, this no, was that's for audio. audio oh i'm but sorry who, okay, okay. This, is audio. Audio. But this is after they sold yeah so they're, they're trying to figure out how not to pay me the amount that sure. they would they're going to have to pay me wow. right. so they made me sign this thing that went from quarterly to yearly so they wouldn't have to pay me for each quarter which sounds insane right now this is the shoe we're talking about right here you had yeah. to fight for the and That's we've talked about this color way, but, but yeah, I like that That's color. When, like when, that it, when it got further on, we got to play around with the colors right. a little bit more. So we had some more fun like that. What about the A on the side? It's got this swooshing. Right. It's got this Nike swoosh kind of thing. Did you, right. was, was that a, I well, had never I, done anything like that. No, before. I had drawn it out because I wanted it something that went back to the heel and made it like, you know, the Nike Puma, yeah, yeah. you know, Reebok kind of thing. Cause just use it as a design element. But the problem was that they had with it is it mirrored it on the other side. So it was this way, it's an A. The other side, it's like a backwards A. And they didn't like that. But it's like, at that point, it's just a design feature mm -hmm. and it'll be okay. <laughs> and uh, I just had to tell them it's all right. Right. And it, it worked out fine. I liked the way it looked and it just gave it something unique. Mm. So, you guys, and you sold a lot of them, man. Like that was a really popular shoe back then. Yeah, and that one, we even did girls' colors mm. and kids' sizes and stuff like that. And then that's still when PacSun was around, so they were moving a lot of shoes. Ooh, and you... it was just one of those shoes that was clean enough for people that didn't skate to wear. And uh, we did so many different colorways that, you know, you could usually find, like, your school colors or something like that. I know a lot of people at La Habra, we did, like, a, a navy blue and white one, like a Highlander color, and they were rocking it. Well, right is there. that the high school colors? Yeah. That's Blue pretty sick. Mm. I think that's what you hope. That's <laughs> yeah. what shoe being a skate shoe, I think that's what you hope for. It's like the K the Kenny Anderson shoe. Right. That one took off. Yeah. Every you know, um transcended skating. Everybody's right. wearing it. Yeah. A few shoes do that. A few shoes do. Yeah. Yeah. Got you know. Who's that dude with the hair? The singer? Uh anyone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> you know <what> <laughs> A lot of those. Yeah, Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit's oh, uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Biscuits, yeah. Limp Biscuits on stage. Yeah, Audio did sponsor a few bands too. Mm -hmm. They had uh, Blink 182 wearing the shoes for a while. Fred Durst. He's the one. Fred that Durst. That's, that's, that's what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. That's him. Yeah. Fred. What did, did I say? Blink 182. No, you said Limp Biscuit. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. that's also Fred Durst. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. Him. He did it off of the neck. But then uh, he did it. Yeah. also there was a video. Someone showed me Justin Timberlake was wearing my white Audio V4s in one of his. Like famous videos where we're in an all white suit uh -huh. and he's walking toward the camera and the camera's panning away at a floor angle and it's backing up and each time he's taking a step he's stepping right in front of the lens uh, and it had the audio v4s in all white oh and it was my like God. what like i think it was even the white ones with the black a because i just remember it's like front and center he even stepped sideways in front of the camera and it's just like an audio ad <laughs> what the hell? And uh -huh. i don't know if he asked for shoes or they gave him shoes or what and then I think even later, someone pointed out he was wearing them in a photo. He's standing next to like Cameron Diaz and he's wearing the audios in a different color. That's amazing. So they kept popping up in weird spots like that. I think Jeff Taylor's the one that sent me a link to the video. Like, check this out. And I was like, hmm. what? Why are you sending me this? And then I saw it like, whoa, that's so funny. That's the man. shoe. And then it ended up on um, that Pimp My Ride show too. Exhibit. The guy that does the rims for mm -hmm. Exhibit and stuff. And he was like, at one point, he's kneeling next to some rims. And he's like, look at those rims. And then they pan on his shoes, like, look at those shoes. And it was my audio. No way. Yeah. And it was like, that's cool. I don't even know how that. they're getting them. but You got to yeah. love that. Free yeah. promo. That's yeah. yeah. Free market. It's just cool seeing them pop up everywhere. And then someone even said John Cena was wrestling in them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're really blowing up oh back then, God. man. Yeah, they, were, <laughs> anyway. they just ended up showing up everywhere. I yeah. think it was just an alternative to dunks, you know? Mm. Yeah. If you didn't want to rock Nikes and you wanted to wear something different, and these were skate shoes, and they were out there, and they were probably more affordable, too. But that silhouette and, was cool. And it's, they were more comfortable. They're, like, they're, that those silhouette. Were some of the most, I still get comments on how comfortable those shoes were. Because hmm. we used back. a different material inside, and I shaped them, like, to fit, a sh like, a foot just right, so they weren't uh, completely straight. They were like angled a little bit. Uh. So I guess a lot of shoes get designed on computers. So they design them completely straight, but your foot isn't straight. Right. So when they do them like that, both of the insides, it hits your big toe and it puts pressure on it constantly because uh -huh. it's your, your foot isn't straight. Yeah. So if you angle it a little bit and use a different last, then all of a sudden it fits perfectly and it doesn't put pressure anywhere. 
right mm. when you put it on you'll feel it like whether it fits your foot or not yeah so sometimes when you get new shoes you put it on and you're like oh that doesn't feel right oh i just got to break them in sure it shouldn't be like that mm. you shouldn't have to break it in if it's giving you pressure anywhere it's not shaped the way it's supposed to be shaped yeah you might as well just throw it in the microwave <laughs> you can try but it's not gonna change that the bend but yeah i know like, now that this, you know these are some of the like you know skate tips that people yeah, i remember do, that you know? with yeah. bands and, and stuff, people still throw them in the microwave yeah. for sure i never did just that. make sure there's I no metal on it yeah you know true. Well, i know metal eyelet yeah. yeah no metal eyelets in the yeah, microwave do that. that'd be bad pat was there ever talks of you getting on audio i think at that point you were on genetic maybe i was yeah i was probably on genetic right? yeah because really? those were those years yeah while yeah. i was on audio he was on genetic and then okay. i think they both ended close to the same time maybe audio had like one or two more years mm. yeah genetic was short-lived maybe yeah. a little over two years two years yeah. okay. was was that out of airwalk they were yeah th Back they were airwalk. airwalk money it's funny i don't know why they just didn't do airwalk i know but I think like Airwalk was cool time. at one point, and then Airwalk turn had a weird turn where then everyone was like, "Oh, Airwalk, Airwalk's whack." Well, I think they started making like so so many different styles of shoes that had nothing to do with skateboarding, oh. and they were selling them too. So like, I think Airwalk at that point was probably a public, publicly traded company. So they're just making money for the investors, and if they sell more shoes, that looks great. Yeah. But it doesn't help skateboarding, and it'll never come back to skateboarding after that. You know, yeah. this is genetics. I don't even remember genetic, to be honest with you. I do remember that. I do remember, that. I do I remember, remember the them, but yeah. I don't remember because it, it was short lived. I remember the logo and I remember the ads. But yeah, still, they, it's so funny because like two years is a long time, but yeah. in skating, it's like the in the blink of an eye. Yeah, totally. it's pretty quick. I think there were a lot of shoe companies out at that time, so it's like everyone had to compete. What year is this? Like 99, 98? Yeah, that shoe looks Maybe like it's... Maybe 98, 99. Yeah, yeah. yeah, about that time. So right. you guys would have a two-page spreads and all that. I was yeah. like, damn, they're coming out. These guys, like, that's... Getting two-page spreads. They had a good... Airwalk yeah. money. You Airwalk to, money. I mean, yeah. for a month... Airwalk money. Yeah. Is that your you shoe right there or no? That was my first pro model. That's your first pro nice. model. That thing so is tacked out. So I had two, two pro models with them. That's coming that's that's Air bubbles are in that yeah. thing, man. <laughs> So you are we were we getting paid royalties on this and everything and yeah it was almost kind of like the board company where you got a base plate and then if you went over if you sold a certain amount you mm -hmm. would get more money okay got you what was the shoe royalty thing back then was it two dollars a shoe I think it was different for everybody okay. depending on the company how many you're gonna sell right I think in the end they change it to a percent <laughs> because they sell the different places for different amounts yeah, true. Yeah. so they would just give you a percent of that sale rather than saying it was two dollars or 250 or whatever mm. it was mine was two dollars and a dollar fifty year uh yeah right. Something uh, international like that. right so that they just changed it to percent to make that easier yeah you know why a dollar fifty in international you would think, no you, you think it'd be more international yeah, that's what I it's thought. probably because they were selling a bulk amount yeah. for less just yeah. like when you sell to a wholesale you got to give them a discounted price because they're buying however many of them yeah, that's probably what it was they just sending it, it out to one distributor in bulk. Yeah. How many shoes did you have on Genetic? I had that we're going to sell, two sold. My third one, they went out of business before the third one came out. Okay. What, what, why'd they go out of business? What do you think happened? I think the guy that was running it made some kind of mistake. Mm -hmm. Something happened money-wise, and then we got the phone call. It's like, sorry, guys, Rob Dotson called, and we're just like, we can't do we're it. Done. There's no more. Yeah. No way. And at that point, yeah, that, so that was my second this shoe. This is the second yeah. shoe. Okay. They're teched out. Yeah, they are super teched. tech. Mm -hmm. Is that and the same sole? No, that's not the same sole. Same sole. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So they use the same sole, different upper. And then my third shoe was going to be a little more basic, so it was all new, different uh, sole and everything. Hmm. Well, that one has air up front, too, like under mm -hmm. the ball of your foot. Yeah, huh? the other one did, too, as well. Yeah. yeah. So, it reminded me of an Air Max. Right. That's where I copied it from. So if you look at the back, you could even see how everything wasn't really symmetrical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you fully had creative control over this they shoe. They kind of, they let us do the designs, or we said what we wanted, mm -hmm. and then the drawings came back. So I worked with, uh, I think his name was John Eads. So he was easy to work with. It's like, what do you like? Sketch something out. Then it's like, how do you like this? And we would change it up here and there till it worked out for me. It worked out with the company. Right. Listen, man, I mean, it's not, I mean, two years. <sighs> Do you still have a pair of those? 
I have pairs of them, but they're so old, like with the foam, everything's oh, falling, falling apart. apart. So, oh, like, yeah. if you touch it, it'll probably fall apart. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so crazy. It's all yellow. There yeah, was stuff. something about the, the PU material back then, because even the audios, they're starting to disintegrate. Like, anything yeah. that wasn't just the rubber, that's why the V4 still lasted, because it was a. I went back to the, just the cup sole, mm-hmm. rubber all the way up, and stitched in. But still, the, the midsole is starting to break down. But anything with that EVA or PU starts to just yeah, break down. Yeah, It's crazy. Yeah, I have some that are all cracked up now, yeah. just samples and stuff. So then Genetic goes out of business. So was it Genetic, then Nike? Or was it no. the, uh, Nike, then Genetic? It was Nike, Nike Reef. Reef, then Genetic. Nike Reef, then Genetic. And then after Genetic was nothing? I think nothing. Nothing? Yeah, yeah nothing. So after like school, 98 or 2000-ish? Was there a point where you were just like, hey, I'm... I'm done with, I'm just going to go to school and finish it up or get a job. Because I feel like even to this point, you're still making good money. I mean, we got shoe um, deals, we got a board, you know. I mean, that shoe deal was good for me. And then it was probably downhill from there. <laughs> yeah, but oh, there's a there point. wasn't anything else to like. I mean, it was just like, okay, you got your board. World. Uh, I guess around that time, contests were starting to be big. Not as mm. big as they were. So... I think a lot of people still knew me as a contest skater. Mm-hmm. So I started making money from doing good in contests. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there were, you'd make money from X Games, shoes, and clothing sponsors, and then whatever. Would they match the, your winnings? Um, some companies did up to a certain amount, but I think at one point when the prize money was like super way too much, it was like, yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably yeah, like when uh, Nija and all those got like a hundred grand or something. It's like, we can't be matching that every month. <sighs> yeah, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> yeah. But back in my day, it was just like you won a contest, you got five thousand dollars. So, so like, but in two thousand, right when Genetic was going on, you, your board sponsor. So I was on. I should be on Powell. Yeah, Powell. Powell. That's right. Mm-hmm. So I was ninety nine. You got on. Yeah. So with Powell, I was still, you know, I was making a good living. Yeah. But with Powell, it was up and down because I wrote for maybe about eight years. So my that's a salary long time, ranged up and down from throughout mm. those eight years. Because at one point, Powell even stopped doing pro models for a while. So that was And they even took cabs away, right? That was before I got on. Oh, okay. Because I remember that. They were just doing like uh, mini logo boards Mm -hmm. and like just things with Powell's name, but not. But that's when it also when it was just Powell, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when I was on, it was still just Powell. Like now it's Powell Peralta. Right. When I was on, it was Powell. At one point, it was uh, just called The Brigade, just for the pros. Really? And they made the AMs like. I believe on Powell, like Haswell Berry was like on Powell, but then like if you oh. turn pro, you're on the brigade. Okay. But it's, yeah. it's still Powell probably. Yeah, yeah. that's so weird. Sure. Like marketing wise, they try to make it like two companies, yeah, but it's too confusing. to me, it's still Powell. Mm-hmm. But I feel like eight years you were still on for a long time. So you're going yeah. on well into the 2000s, early 2000s. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's just the, gen- it's just a shoe thing stop, but you still had the boards. I still had the board and then... I mean, it wasn't like I was doing bad, you know, I was, That's I was okay, yeah. but uh, like later on, it just goes up and down when boards don't sell, they don't sell. And yeah. then if that's what your salary is. The industry is this like it goes wave up yeah. of highs and lows. And around that time, we both had a part in that uh, Bones Class of 2000 video, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's one thing that I got. We just mentioned his name, Nija. You played in the S game of skate <laughs> against Nija Houston with. Yeah, I think he full, beat me. He beat you, yeah, for sure. But for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you know, no, no, come on, Pat. Come on, you know what I'm saying. No, the Pat, funny, the Pat funny, can mess up some flat ground. I, I know he could take somebody out. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, I didn't mean it like that. Yeah. But the funny thing about this video right here mm-hmm. is you're playing. The, the, oh, they have okay. the different lanes. They got, going they got on. the three lanes, right? Okay. So it's. It's Pat in the middle playing Nija Houston. Midway through this game, mm-hmm. Kelly Hart gets up there and you play, you start playing somebody on the left hand side. Oh, wow. Chris Cole's playing At the same Eric. Time? Yeah. Chris Cole's playing Eric Ellington in the next lane over. Wow. Like there's a lot of things going on right here. There's wow. Joey right there. Joey Brzezinski won his game. So was this like the original this like is 2007. first one this is the S. Or yeah, was 2007 yeah was this the first S game of skate this was at uh, the trade show right was at the trade show yeah when it was ASR that That's was big crazy. that came out that was like that was pretty cool like I remember they ended the games on this on the la- like you didn't get two tries in the last letter you just if you didn't land oh, the last okay. letter you were just done like sudden yeah it was just like sudden oh, death bow. Yeah, game's yeah. done I'm yeah. just trying to find cause like they, they 
they call your name out. It's like Kelly Hart and Ly- Lane One. You I, know, it's like I can't remember. Yeah, Pat who had I the think. Iron Maiden. Yeah, how did your game go, Kelly? Huh? How did your game go? I don't remember. I think I'm pretty sure I lost. I I just can't remember. I was so nervous. Like yeah. I was 22 or something. I was so young, like just so nervous to be around I th- anyone. I think if they were doing this in the mid 90s, I would have had a great chance at it. <laughs> you know, but when they started this stuff, it was already like, I don't know. I I could have done it, but they got to They had to chill with the lanes. That was too crazy. Well, you got to do. I think it's, it's kind of good. I think it's. I think it's a good I, I idea. I don't like the limitations of like you have to be in the lane. No, like, but they're yeah. trying to get all these games done. At the yeah, same time. I right. It looks like you're running through I multiple get that. people. I get that. Yeah. So like, if you just let that zone open, like there's Kelly right here. Oh yeah, there. Oh my On gosh. The you're running that line right there. Yeah. <laughs> right, you're See? pushing your boundaries. No, out of bounds. Out of bounds. Uh, doesn't count. I landed the kickflip though. Yeah. I. I wonder if that was the thing, if you didn't stay in the lines. I'm sure it's fine. That's just funny, though. Yeah. So you're th- riding that line dangerously yeah. close. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 2007, you're still riding a Plan B board in here. Um, I think at this point, I wasn't even sponsored anymore. So they're just giving me boards. Oh, I'm getting okay. boards who I could get from. Next year, you played Costin. 2008. See, I just keep losing. I just <laughs> keep losing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, these didn't really. It's funny. I I can't. These never really got put on. I mean, obviously they're on YouTube here, right? But no one got to see these video or these games really. Live wasn't a thing back yeah. then. It wasn't. Nah. It was like this was uploaded later. Three sixty shove it. That's a dirty trick, especially back then. That's what tough. was the prize back then? Do we do we know what the prize was for winning a S game? Free shoes for a year. Yeah, right. Was no, it? Not that, back. It was, I it thought was, it was like no, five grand. Wasn't no, it like, five grand? Or, it had like, be like some sort of money. Yeah. No way Don Brown would have that. that. Back then, they actually, yeah, when the money was there. <laughs> there was a prize. <laughs> no, when the money was there, they were giving it away. Yeah. Well, I just I felt no, right Kelly, there. you fell. I, dude, I, of course I would do that. <laughs> the first thing I would do. Look at here comes Kelly. Watch this. Watch. Oh, dude. Uh, <laughs> dude, that's slippery right there. Dude. That ground, that ground. The See, there's that line. Was, now, the sticker's real slick. I went over the line. Yeah. But that ground, line. that ground is real slippery anyways. Yeah. yeah. Look at, that's Rothmeyer for sure. With dude, the, there's Ryan Clemens. He has the uh, mic right there. There we yeah. go. It's Waters, Rothmeyer. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny, man. Good time. Did you like uh, the contest stuff? I mean, you did pretty well. Um, for me, it was a chance to get out of my house. So it was... For me, it was awesome. But what do you mean? Like, were you done like going out and skating and filming and doing all that stuff by I mean, this point? I think at that point, there wasn't really videos for me to film for. I, okay. Probably that's why I had I, w- I was in another team videos. I had 411, prog- Progression, Digital. Yeah. So it was never a team video. It was just doing stuff on your own. Right. But you popped up a lot of places. Mm-hmm. Yes. You're you always did. there. Yeah. Definitely. You had a, yeah, you did have the Progression. Mm-hmm. Who did progression back then? I was trying to remember. Because do- Brian Meehan, Meehan or something. I'm probably saying his remember. last name wrong. It was all it was like southern, south. yeah, southern Cal- or uh, southern OC guys, right? Yeah, towards your area. Yeah, I I really like those videos because mm-hmm. you guys were all in them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you did a lot of. Uh, you were friends with Daryl Grogan too, right? You did some video um, stuff with him. He had videos, and then I think he just had people. He would just call people, and then it's just like you just go out, then Skate, okay. you got in his video, right? But he always had like, what did he film with? He filmed like actual like film. Yeah, he filmed with film. That mm-hmm. seemed like I didn't. And you know, as, as a skater growing up, I didn't really get that. I was like, I just want to see. Just give me the VX one thousand. <laughs> you know, what, you know what I mean. Like, when well, the film usually doesn't have sound. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then they gotta dub it in later. Yeah. Even was, if, it looks, if they if they even do dub it. Right. In. Yeah. It's just it's kind of weird. You lose half of it. Yeah, because I understand it from like I mean I don't understand it, but as a videographer there's like oh this looks so cool yeah but to the skate little kid that's watching the video was like i never really i don't it may have been ahead of its time yeah like i think or it was. maybe just not done right that's probably it daryl grogan had some great videos though back then there's good skating yeah, i feel like a yeah. lot of videos yeah, yeah yeah it was just it was like a different look to it it's a visual art. yeah it's different you know? yeah. yeah and it's it's a lot harder trying to go out and film when the dude's but yeah, I mean, hey, you don't I know only if you have, did it good, right? And also, like, hey, only have a couple of roles, you know. We gotta. Yeah. And with real film, you're not backing it up and doing it again. Like, you just you run that film and you develop it at the end. 
there's no going back over anything. You get what you get. Yeah, you mm -hmm. just get just like rolls. I'm glad that I lived through that one point. I lived at the late end of it where I started to get start skating, like filming. For photo sequences. For photos that I yeah. got to do that, like right. where it was actual film. It and makes I was a big like, difference. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh my God, this is insane. It puts the pressure on yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> I got it two is. rolls of film left. You have, you know, this many tries. You got to do it. You gotta, you gotta and also, try. he's got a pile of film next yeah. to him. And you're yeah, just like, I'm like, oh dude, put God, that away. Don't yeah. keep that out. Like, yeah. that, that's making me hurt. My heart hurt. Right. You, right. shit. That's you, why I feel I sucked half the time. I'm like, <laughs> look at all this guy's film I wasted today. My goodness. You remember though when that hat, when the dig digital stuff came around? Mm -hmm. Wow, that was cool. Well, digital, digital was rad. And you had a, you had a couple parts in the digital. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I'm talking about the digital camera. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> it switched from film to digital. We, we were talking yeah, yeah, about yeah, progression right. and digital. <laughs> Digital was a good transition. Digital there, was yeah. sick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like digital. Bill yeah. Weiss. Uh, this is going to be a weird question, but uh, were you the first person to go up a handrail? Because it was in, uh, what was it, Plan B Revolution. You went up that handrail. Yeah, the one at, that's at West Covina, 90, right? 1997. Yeah, yeah there's a little rail at West Covina, and I remember Ray Barbie had a, like an ad going front side, no slide down it mm -hmm. for the firm, and we just happened to recognize it. Oh, that's the one that, that Ray had skated. And uh, I was skating with Jerry Fowler that day. Love and Jerry Fowler. And we were cruising. I think he's the one that looked at it like, I think we could grind up this thing. Like, that seems sketchy, you know? Mm. So you start going up it, and uh, it's on like a little slant. So you go up there, and you get on it, and the thing is like just really steep. Mm -hmm. So you hit it abrupt, almost like a pole jam, but you got to ollie into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just remember we were getting into it, and it's scary to ollie onto and the slower you go, the more you're going to hit it and it's going to flip off. Gotcha. Well, Jerry was getting on it first and he started getting more control and getting up it, but he didn't want to go fast enough to go out the thing. And I realized if I'm going to actually commit to this, I have to go almost three times as fast. Just okay. got to push at it and huck it and just try not to hit it too hard. Because if you hit it really hard right when you make contact with it, mm -hmm. it's probably going to flip one way or the other. Yeah. So you just got to like try to light foot up it and just keep the momentum going forward and up. So I was able to get the 50-50 up it. Right. And uh, I went back later and got the nose grind up it for my interview. Mm -hmm. And that was like even tougher because you're really digging in, but mm -hmm. you had to just not put a lot of pressure on it. You had to like light foot and get it up it. And, but, do uh, you get, but do you get credited for the first going up a rail? The first yeah. person to go up a rail? Because I remember when, remember when um, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on Leo, Leo, Leo Romero. Leo Romero. Remember Romero. when Leo Romero went up, yeah. everybody was yes. like, oh my God, Leo Romero right. went up the rail. Yeah. That was the like a small one compared to the stuff that Leo was doing later. But that is the first one that I knew of, of anyone going up a rail. Right. But then when we were thinking back, um, Jeremy Klein had one in a video where there's, it's next to a like a bank. Mm -hmm. And he always off the bank and grinds this little uh, yellow rail. So he but grinded up that rail. It was a handrail. It was a handrail. But it was it was like next to there was two like black banks next to it. And there were like maybe three or four stairs going down and two yellow rails from what I remember. Yellow or white? I don't know, maybe it's silver. Is it the okay. rail behind uh Beverly Hills High School, Torrance High? There were banks back there in the back? Wait, oh, Bronx? Yeah. Well knowing knowing that. Jeremy Which Klein, banks? it probably was in that area. Okay, Torrance High, yeah. I think there was a rail, and you could go bump over chain. Maybe the uh, like cream did a backside flip. Or oh, yeah, you're talking about. Like yeah, I think those rails on the side, mm -hmm. right? Because there was I a chain next little. to There's backside fifty little. fifty up it. Yeah. What video was this that he did it in? Do we know? Yeah, it's probably one of the birdhouse videos. Probably birdhouse. Maybe like feasters or yeah, something. yeah, the early birdhouse sure videos. Right. But I remember that being a standout trick because he grinded up the rail too. But it was you know out of the bump and he grinded what the year, end. What year was bur uh, feasters? But I think he got both. He got the fifty fifty on it, right? He got both trucks on it going up, right? He didn't just 5-0 it. He got both trucks 50-50 up it. I don't know. I'd have to look back, but that's, as far as back as I can remember, that's the first one I remember seeing. I thought you were going to say I always wanted to be a gangster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as far as back as I was like, I remember I wanted to be a gangster. <laughs> Good fellas, man. Best man yeah. ever. So we think it was Jeremy Klein, first person to go up a rail. That'd be my guess. Because okay. that was the first person I ever saw go up a rail. And then as far as that rail at West Covina, I got the grind up it. And then maybe I'd say less than a month later, Chinita went there and got the grind up it and shot the photo with Sturt and it ended up in a Duke's ad. But it was shot from behind. And I don't even think it had your name on the ad. <laughs> maybe real small at real the small? bottom. Okay. 
because a lot of people thought it was me because it's wearing Dukes, it's shot from behind, and it's the rail that everyone saw me grind up. <laughs> but but wait that, a minute. that you, was the ad. You went out and shot with Dan Sturt, but it wasn't a death-defying stunt. He uh, wanted probably to fight for me. It was, but it, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's scary to go up a rail. It is. It's dangerous. But come on, Sturt, Sturt just wanted. Right. No, but that's the, yeah. at that it, time it though. That's, that's that's gnarly at that time going right. up something. Right. right. So you're going into the unknown at that point yeah. and going really fast at it, and mm -hmm. you just gotta try to hold for on and, sure. and get out the top. And at one, I was there with Sturt, and he wanted me to go fast enough to grind up over a trash can, and <laughs> it was his idea. He didn't want the trash can upside down because that seemed too safe. He wanted the trash can oh open, my gosh. so I'm grinding up this thing faster than that, trying to launch over the trash can after it. And you put a like, trash can up on the, on the top. To yeah, up, up the top. So you're going mm. up the rail and trying to launch the trash can after, and it was a pretty wide one too. So I remember just like getting my foot stuck in it and stuff, and oh. I'm just like, this is a little too hectic. You yeah. know, it's not gonna work. Yeah, the We're, nose grind was in uh, was the Transworld video, right? It was right, in like a montage. And I was there, same thing. I was there with Atiba, and it was just me and him, and we shot the photos got the sequence got the stills got whatever we needed on film like just stills and yeah. with camera stuff and then we wanted to film one well he had like a the 16 millimeter so we filmed one and the one that i got first was going fast nollied out got the clean one mm -hmm. for the still go back and film it with the 16 and we got one that kind of like came out the side a little more it wasn't as dead straight and it didn't get the good nolly out. Oh. So that's the one that ended up in the video. And we didn't try to film another one because it was 16 millimeter. It looked clean and though. Like, and plus you can't see what it looked like but on I, the I footage. remember the one that I did that was good. You know the difference when it feels good oh, and you yeah. nolly out and you yeah. actually got some air out of it? Yeah. That one was perfect. And we don't have any footage of that because we were just shooting stills and sequence at that yeah. point. Hmm. So we never got to see that one. We are looking for, Raj is actively looking for the Jeremy Klein. We just can't find it. It's it's really tough to find. Yeah, it's it's in... We, he, he scrubbed through uh, Ravers already. Feasters, right. maybe? Yeah, there's Feasters. Oh, you went through Feasters? All, yeah, okay. I don't know. He can't find May, it. I mean, it is it at video? the end of the know. world video when he does like the the backsmith down the rail and stuff like that? Would it have been that far back that he no, got up? No, I don't think it was thing? that far back. It had to be okay. after. After that? I mean, he's looking through tracker videos now. Yeah, because Jeremy like, Klein actually had a lot of firsts. If you think about it, like he had the first backsmith on a handrail. Yes. Really? Yeah. And like, it was hung super deep. Super in it. low, yeah. But yeah. It, was like a, it was like a forced, it was like real small rail though. Yeah, it looks so sick. It though. looks Just super sick. The way he, he clicked down. up into it. And then even in the video, it had like a still shot after. Mm -hmm. And it makes that little like little shutter sh noise. Yeah. And it oh. shows it. Oh. That, that backsmith. Fully was dipped. First and, backsmith on a handrail ever. And, and look what, how he knows grind too. Yeah, yeah. There it goes. but man, look how dipped that is. That was Holy locked so in sick. too. Cra well, on a that is, right. Look at the three style. stair rail. Look at all that style right there. That is, yeah. And I it's, mean, backsmiths it's just hard. look good. It's hard to do it on something that high and short. And yeah. he just he had all he that. Well, that, we hey, Raj found that one pretty quickly. That's <laughs> so I just can't sick. find the other one. <laughs> yeah, maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe we're no, thinking uh, about something that just doesn't exist. Jeremy Ray was the first person to go up a handrail. You dreamt it, and you're like, I want to do that. And it's still a Jeremy. It's still yeah. a Jeremy. Yeah. It's a Jeremy. <laughs> right. yeah. Either way, Jeremy did it first. That's oh, true. This is true. Oh yeah, and Jeremy Dunn did it first. Yep. They say Jeremy did it first. But yeah. then That's Pat went a yeah. month later, got the ad with Sturt, and then people thought it was Jeremy that right. in the ad. What was this a Duke's ad? It was a Duke's a ad. A Duke's yeah. ad. I guess you could tell it was me if you look at the photo. I had a chain wallet on. I thought it was probably Hensley. You could see a chain wallet. <laughs> wow. yeah. yes. And you always had like a bun going. You had yeah, long hair. Yeah, and at that point he had yeah. long hair. So yeah. you see a little bit of the hair too. It's like, I, I could tell. He could tell. But not everybody could tell. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What, so, what, I'm what, a stunt double form sometimes. It was a good ad. <laughs> it was a very good ad. That's some scary shit right there. <laughs> Were you ever... When, uh, speaking of scary shit, I mean like Jeremy is doing some crazy gaps. He's skating, uh, nose grinding across roofs and s with... He's kind of doing some death-defying stuff. Were you ever with him that you were like, damn, this is kind of sketchy, dude. I don't even want to kind of watch my friend kind of do this right now. Hey, I'm watching him. I'm still learning how to skate, so I do my stuff below him. <laughs> let you keep it on the ground. <laughs> but at you the same time, I could throw some shine his way because he was the first to do a lot of the things that I ended up pushing a little further too. Like he was the first one that I saw do the front side 270 lips on like the flat bars and stuff. Mm. And I know like Nottis had done it. And I think even Thebo had one really early on, the front side 270 lip mm -hmm. on a parking block kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And Nottis had them down. But um, he was doing them on 
like flat bars, like the Huntington Park and stuff like that. Okay. I think that's where you taught me how to do it because I was just watching him do it. I'm like, I know how to do frontside 360s and I'm comfortable on a rail and I can get it high enough to get on it. I'm just scared of the angle and the way it goes over it. Mm-hmm. And he kind of just, I watched him do it. He talked me through it and I put it together. And once I had it, I could do it. And then once I had it, I wanted to take it to a real rail. So we found that one at Behringer, Behringer. Yeah. and it was like a rail that came in at an angle so you can get on top oh. of it a little better. And that was the first time it had ever been done on a real rail. But I wouldn't have been able to do that without skating with him and taking, you know, a page out of his book right. and You're getting welcome. it. Yeah, <laughs> so, but I was able to get it. Take done. all the credit. That you was right. that. That was is Tell that the one in the park? Right, that was the one at the park. Yeah, I remember the. I remember tripping out on this in a four and one. It was the first time I ever seen the, on a handrail, Bixman front board. Jerry Fowler did on right. that thing. Mm. Yeah, and and that was, that, like, that's what? when we were skating with him a lot. So he yeah. probably went Which there one, with is us. This a corner pocket rail? Or yeah, no? it's a corner pocket. It comes in at an angle down the stairs, so it was easier to get onto, and it had a good angle to it, and it sent you down. You know, at an angle down path. By the way, this is a nose grind up the rail. Right. I just want to point out really quickly, like, right. look at the rail that they built for this little two stair. Right. I don't even, I don't even right. think they needed to put two <laughs> stairs there. They could right. have just made a slope. Right. It's like they put a bump up to the third stair. What is there's going three on stairs right where there's like a bump to it that's out amazing. of the um, blacktop. This is insane. But that, <laughs> yeah. see, that one for the nose grind, that's probably the one that got the nollie out. Because I was going really fast, hitting it hard, and then got the nollie out. And I really wish we had the footage of that one. Mm. But when, when it was just me and Atiba, it was like, we just have to do everything a bunch of times. We'd shoot it first with stills and sequences. And then if there was still time, we'd film it too, just so we'd have something mm-hmm. to show. But um, a lot of times he was doing double duty, just me and him, and he'd do it. I love Wait, that. Ray Multiple Barbie times. front nose down that? Yeah, in a firm ad. It that was seems, a rad ad. Too. I mean, that seems sketchy, dude. Right, because it's round and it has the bar in the middle, yeah. too. And like, you're landing into a bank still. Is, though. It was a front mm-hmm. nose, right, that he did on it? I don't remember. I just remember seeing it. I, when I saw it, I was like, that's the Ray Barbie rail. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, anytime there's a rail into a bank, right? nope. I don't know if that's really I, a sketchy. bank, though. Well, that no, a bank? It, it's not... It's like, just a slope. At that point, when you come down it, it's pretty flat. Oh, okay. But they banked it up to that stair. So as you're going up it, you're pretty much alling from flat and it just starts going up toward the rail. But where you're alling from to get on, especially going at it that speed, you have to go you're earlier. pretty much going from flat. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got to say Leo Romero up, uh, has the gnarliest ones. Yeah, Leo, I sure. saw Leo doing it up like long ones. Yeah, the one that, the, the slams he was taking yeah, on mm-hmm. too. The park. The park. The Owen uh, Wilson rail. Uh, Owen Wilson rail, yeah. Yeah. He, that doesn't even make sense. But that's, what the, that's a funny thing though, is like through the generations... People, some people just don't know what happened before, right? Right. And so when Leo Romero does that, they're, oh my God, he went up this rail. Well, it's gnarly what he did, but people, yeah. you know, are it's like, super they get it twisted sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Just, Jeremy Ray, first person. Let's go. <laughs> someone's JW. Gotta, someone's got to break the ice. So I broke yeah. the ice and he ran with it. But man, this I loved right seeing his. When I, I was really impressed when I saw the ones he was doing. That was nuts. Yeah. For sure. I mean, one's he took even, to a, that one's still pretty steep. It's a big rail. He took yeah. it to another level. It's long to go up, dude. Right. For sure. Well, that's the thing. When when the rails get bigger and you're going up it, you don't get to roll away with a lot of speed, mm, which yeah. kind of sucks because it sucks it all out of you. But that's a challenge to get up that thing. That's right, so definitely. tall. Right. I don't yeah. know, man. You paved the way for like a lot of stuff, you know? Both of you guys I, have. Yeah. I, I will say, Pat, your, your precision on flip tricks, I, I grew up watching it. I was like, I want to learn tricks like that. Uh, and you're ledge skating. Yeah. You, like yeah, back sure. when he fakey 50 fakey flips. He's got like a hard flip back tails back in 1993. Yeah. That was really really good, I think man. Day one did it in Love Child, yeah, but or New know, World Order. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then we're talking little. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Day one, we're talking about it little. Was, it was a little, little. It was a little guy. Little red curve. Well, in <laughs> that, you talk to someone. <laughs> in that video part, also you had the inward heel, the five zero down a little hub, all right? Yeah. Yeah, which I don't, I don't see anybody else doing that. Even to this day, I don't see inward heel five O's going down. Marquise Henry did it Marquise on Hubba. Marquise could do it. That was anything. nuts. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Have a hideout, all right? Yeah. Down mm. actual Hubba? The yeah. yeah, actual Hubba. That's a high inward heel. That's what I was saying. <laughs> how, how much did he catch of the ledge? He like full on grinded it, dude. I remember Man, that. You'd have to go out that. so far to get it to line up. Or well, you just have to pop the shit well, out Well, because I remember trying to do heel flip frontside nose slide on it, and my foot kept hitting the, the ledge because it's, it's higher and you can't get higher than it at the top, so you have to come out at a different angle. But every time I'd do it, my foot would just hit the ledge. I couldn't line it up to where it didn't hit the ledge. Did you ever skate, Hubba? 
I had probably all these Damn, stairs. I didn't get on the hub. No? No. You had pop, though. That thing was intimidating, this guy. dude. That, the, the, that I mean, thing that, was intimidating, bro. Well, right. the stairs were sketchy because if you skated the stairs the way I like to skate stairs, I didn't like landing right at the bottom. I'd try to clear it by like a foot or two, so I'm not worrying about hitting the last stair. Mm-hmm. But there, if you went that fast, you'd run right into that wall. And it's you're landing on bricks. So if you land like at Bricktown and you land and stick, you're going to go head first into that little wall. Oh, yeah. So I didn't like skating those stairs at all. Yeah. Because you had to go just the right speed to almost hit your tail to have a chance to not slam into that thing. Yeah, that's true. And a lot of people got hurt skating those stairs too. But I remember uh, Gino had a good switch flip down those stairs. That was mm. a rad photo. I know. They, it really wasn't really skated as stairs. No, not really very never. often. Yeah, but that was, was a good one. For sure. In Trilogy, they had some stuff down it. Yeah, a couple I think Marcus, Marcus skated the stairs. Yeah, no, sure. heel and... I saw one, I think he went back 50 50 is one of the like oh, that's such so a crazy rad. it was such a good one too yeah, so it was so so stylish the way you he never did it, saw those the way he yeah. did it bro that heel flip back 50 you wouldn't see those very often no that was sick yeah it was like it was funny how they lit it up because it was like uh, what do you do back 50 50 or back 5 0 then a, kind of like a susky grind mm-hmm. on it and then it just threw heel back 50 you're like <laughs> yeah <laughs> That was cr- crazy. Yeah. So good. Yeah, yeah, that Susky did it coming out straight, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was sick, too. Yeah. You didn't see that really too much either. No. Yeah, it wasn't even called that back then. Right. It was just... And I wonder if he was going for that I or the back I, tail, yeah. you know? Yeah, I don't sometimes even know you get if he was a little crooked. That. Yeah. It looks rad, though. It came out straight. I would yeah. pop some at 5 0 always tripped me out mm. that you did that. Because you kind of did the same thing where it's like you had some more basic oh. tricks in there. And then you just do pop shove at 5.0, which is another trick that you don't see on the yeah, shit. I, I had just learned the pop shove 50s, pop shove 5.0s, and uh, I just figured it would be a good spot to try it at. And I went there specifically to do that one. Oh, you went there just to do pop shove 5.0? I had 5-0. that one in mind because I thought I could do it. Because I had pop shove, it's like catching real high, and I felt like I could throw it up there. Amazing. But I do remember while I was doing the pop shove at 5.0, it kept wanting to do the 180 out. Just the way my body would turn when I get on the 5.0, it started like twisting me. And uh, Scott Johnson was there, and he was telling me, oh, you should do the 180 out. Mm, like, that would be, be cool, good. too. Yeah. And I was like, I'm just trying to fight this and get it to come out straight. <coughs> and I finally got the one I wanted, but I do think the 180 mm. would have been sick, too. And it naturally wanted to go that way anyway. Dude, Steve Olsen is so, crazy. So sick, bro. Yeah. That was basically a late shove out of it. I know, right? What, dude? Yeah. Back. T- oh, here so we go. Long. That's. Like, yeah. he- mm-hmm. I think he was trying back tail. Because well, yeah, he got yeah, the back tail, too. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But that heel flip. It's a heel flip back 50. And I like the way it, at the end the board kind of comes like a little bit that way. Yeah, yeah. Small, it just looks like sick. Small, like. Mm. Is this like you a just, hub of montage I'm, of all the stuff? I mean, I don't who knows if it's all of it. This has got to be like, it's definitely on video. Yeah, this for sure. Like, cool there's a little dot right switch there. 50 and Switch Smith. Switch Smith was insane too. Yeah. Is that LeVar? Yeah. 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 LeVar was so sick. Killed it, bro. LeVar was another one. He just would do all this stuff first try. He was so good. Dude. And he was so relaxed and natural. Yes. Would you guys go, uh, both of you guys travel together? You guys, you guys go on a road trips or even like overseas or anything? We did a lot of traveling, like I mean, road trips and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we did road trips with like Jody Morris and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, sick. And then we went up to SF for a couple of the videos that you saw us. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. Damn, Lenny Kirk, dude. Wow. wow. That is some good stuff in there, man. Damn, you- Clyde. Clyde. Were you there? Switchback tail was psycho back then. Sorry to interrupt, Chris. Yeah. No, I'm just saying you. Oh, there's a pretzel, Carl Watson. Yep. Mm. Um, Do you know that uh, Carl's son is named Jonas? Really, my brother Jonas. Jonas? Amazing, yeah. man. Yeah, because Carl was on that. the same team as Jonas when they rode for um, Clean together. Okay. Yeah, so they got to travel a little bit together too. That's I've amazing. talked to him recently. I bought his book, the My First Skateboard yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought one of those. Sick. Yeah, <laughs> those things are rad. Yeah, Carl's a Carl. Yeah, I love Carl Carl's Watson, great. man. Shout out Carl Watson. We need to get Carl on the show. Yes, yeah. please. For yes. sure. Uh, well, we could watch <laughs> montages all day long, yeah, yeah. man. While we're shouting out people, I would like please. to shout out uh, Frankie Hill. I see you got the the bulldog board. Oh back there. yeah. So I've been talking to him lately because we had actually crossed paths. I was in his zone, and just realized I'm up in Santa Barbara. I'll, I'll hit him up see if he's around. I met up with him. We traded boards. I signed one for him. He signed one for me. We got a picture together. And we talked about maybe doing something in the future together. Like maybe Love I'll that. do some artwork for one of his graphics and uh, maybe we'll do a collaboration of some kind. And then I saw him posting up stuff where he sells his boards and he had his daughter Frenchie on there and she's doing artwork. She was doing artwork on her boards and selling those. And then she just recently made a shirt that had a little baby dragon on it, breathing fire. <laughs> 
So today before I came here, I got a little package in the mail and it was the shirt that Frenchie designed and it's for my daughter Jaden because they're about the same age and my daughter also likes to do art. So we did a little art exchange. So we're sending them some stuff. They sent us that and then um, the girls are going to do boards for each other. Oh, so wow. my daughter's going to like paint a unicorn on a board for Frenchie, send oh, no it up to way. her yeah, and Frenchie's going to send one down to Jaden. Right. Yeah. So it'll be pretty cool. Love that. Sick. Shout yeah. out to yeah, uh, Frankie Hill. So we'll see. We might end up with a, a Frankie Hill and Jeremy Ray collaboration that would be board sick. in the future. Because hmm. yeah. you got, I mean, Way Bros. You guys are Ray, Ray Bros. Yeah. bros. I, yep. Sometimes I say Way because I say I it fast. That's one of the things about our brand. The, the name was confusing enough because a lot of people don't understand the Ray. And then you have the bros in there. Right, and right, it's just right. a tongue twister for people. It is a little yeah, bit. It is. it is. Ray bros. So excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Ray bros. I know. I mean, but we've got boards with Pachinita. I mean, yeah. we do a lot of boards. We, what was it? What, we got the Jeremy Ray. I love this one. This is the... Uh, yeah, that was uh, one, one of my board. throwback graphics from when I wrote for Blockhead. That was my second board on Blockhead. And yeah. my first screen board, because the board mm. before that was a slick bottom. So I ended up riding more of these because these were like the, the hand screen, silk screen Ooh, boards. Okay. So yeah, I brought that back for our own brand. And uh, I just did, I redid the thing. I drew the original blockhead one by hand. And then I redrew this one. In the blockhead one, she was holding the little blockhead logo instead of the salt. Right. This one, she's holding the little cruiser board. Mm -hmm. But... We kept it, uh, the little slogan, when it rains, it when sucks. When it rains, it sucks. Yeah. yeah. That was and the fun part. You got Pachinita, the... Uh, and that's a throwback to Javante one. Turner. That's right. He had the right. original right. Chiquita, yeah. and mm -hmm. I always loved that board. And then when I just thought about doing it, it hadn't been done since then. Mm -hmm. So I did up the graphic and got that going. And as soon as we got that design done, I saw like two more popping up out of nowhere <laughs> from different brands. Like, remember that brand 3D? That, uh, yeah, Brian yeah, Anderson, Brian Anderson. Yeah. they had sure. one that was a Chiquita board too. And it was like, how weird that it hadn't been done for like, I don't know, 15, <laughs> all 20 of a sudden, years. Yeah. And Universe. then all of a sudden I saw two that were around this time. But uh, we redid this one. Now it's got the, um, the wood grain in the back. I love that. And we just called out yellow for the bottom stain. And I, I did his, I just loved how it says Chinita in the Chiquita. It's and perfect. And we, we made it yeah. more of a geisha girl than like the fruit tropical girl. The one graphic that I love too that you had was the, uh, oh, that was that Cherry Candy? Yeah. Uh, cherry Clan. The Cherry Clan. <laughs> the Chinita Clan. Not, not, yeah. That was my favorite candy, dude. But, but you had that board graphic. Yeah. So good. Well, and that one came about, I was doing a series of boards. I had just done one for me because I like those uh, gummy bears, like the Black Forest gummy bears. So I did one that had my name, had the gummy bears. I used that bear. And there's been bears in a lot of my graphics, like mm -hmm. little, you know, there's been a bear theme. So that one was cool to do. And when I was done with it, I was like, we should do a series of these. So I asked Jonas what he wanted. And he wanted Bazooka Jonas for the Bazooka Joe. Bazooka done. Joe. Done. We got his yeah. done. And then uh, for Luna, we did, like, instead of Sour Patch Kids, we did Sour Paul Kids. <laughs> so I just said, because he was kind of sour sometimes. <laughs> so... That's funny. <laughs> Sour Paul seemed to fit, and it was Sour a rad like, graphic with the faded colors. And then we asked Pat what he wanted, and he sent me over the photo of the, the Cherry Clan. I was like, oh, this is going to be so good. The colors <laughs> all black and red. and It was mm. such a rad board. It's a rad board. Yeah, so I did that I graphic that. for him. Not to mention that candy is so good. That, right. was, that, that was, is Yeah, good, it's yeah. a classic one. Oh, 10 cents at the little thing. You stop and shop, whatever. Went up to a quarter. I still bought it. Went up to a quarter, <laughs> huh? Yep. So I, that, that's I would see it for the, the family. Lemonheads, cherry clip. Mm, going for the cherry clan. 100%. Yeah. Oh, that beat out the lemonheads for sure. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Wasn't there a grape one too? Alexander yes, there the was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Johnny <laughs> Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed. Oh yeah, for the apple, the green oh, apple, huh? Where are yeah, these candies now? Flavors. Are these candies? Yeah. Is this out of business? Is they're still like, around. You got to go to the special candy stores for sure. What kind of special candy stores? Like the ones that hack like actual candy stores, like not just like your your Seven Eleven or some shit. There's that one down the street. What was that one chain called? Those in the in the, uh, in the malls in the malls i forget the name but there's a new one i what, think you go to sweet factory kind of sweet thing? factory that's the yeah. one you go to those where spots you bag up your own candy yeah exactly that's where you can get those probably not since covid yeah well they have the, everyone's down hands here. in there you know yeah. oh no you, you, you gotta use stuff. no you gotta use a little scooper yeah they yeah. take yeah. that you dare, you dare put your hand <laughs> in there come on let's you know let's yeah. uh, gotta get the immune system up you know what i yeah. mean exactly uh but it must be cool though working with jeremy on some board graphics and yeah, doing, the, sure. doing the ray bros mm -hmm. you know are you guys uh, are these available right now or this is, these are the current ones yeah we have uh jonas's pat's mine and uh paul luna's so Paul Luna's was the martini graphic that has like a, the Pink Floyd style of rainbow coming in. And it said Dark Side of the Luna. Yeah. Oh, right behind uh, Jerron right yeah, there. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's Paul Luna's model that right now. That one's sick. 
Yeah, so that was fun. Do you, uh, Pat, do you keep a lot of your old stuff? Do you keep a lot of your old boards or anything uh, that your name on it? I probably have one of everything. <laughs> That's <laughs> good, though. Yeah. One? Yeah. Yeah. Some people are just really hoarders, you know, and other people. Dubs, dude. Yeah, yeah I'm probably. Dubs. Yeah. Big I, I'm not, not, I'm, you posted some stuff the other day in your story. Yep. You have actually, a you have a lot of stuff. Yeah, dude. I mean dude, these are things like from like you know tour tees and just you mm-hmm. know anything that has again your has your name on it. Yeah, I say that. Shit. No, I love it. I was like impressed and like it was organized. And it's like organized. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean it's not by year or anything, yeah, yeah. but they're folded in there nice. Oh, you low key low key hoarder over there. I am, yeah, but I was like, like, but, like but like nice hoarder. Yeah, like you not organized like, hoarder. Not like you watched the show type of hoarders. You undid the thing to the bucket, and here's all these folded shirts. And I'm like, God damn. But I would want to go there and look through it. That's how cool it looked. I was I'm going like, to do it again. I'm going to keep doing it and just please. keep showing like, yeah. That was dope. I was just, I was a saying lot of that. People, a lot of people like that stuff, yeah. bro. It's like kind of like, I, look, sometimes you're just out there and I'm just like posting stuff, but I don't know what's going to like, what people are going to really like or like what's going to resonate. But no, that, that stuff is cool, man. What's cool is a little behind the scenes and something that you wouldn't get in a normal video or anything, you know? Right. It's a little peek inside. Exactly. And a little story to go with it sometimes, yep. you know? Or yep. it might even be something they've never seen before. And they're like, wow, it's from that far back? Like, yeah, especially some with people, the tour shirts and or stuff. Or some people might not have known I skated for real for a hot second. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like just to give them those little tidbits of like, you know, yeah. little history. Well, there was sick days. You yeah. Unreal was, was fun days. It was it was very quick lived, but it was yeah. definitely a great time in my life mm. for sure. How yeah. long do you think you're on there for? couple months maybe like six months uh, if that yeah it was get very a, fast get a pro model uh guest board going with them yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get you across <laughs> all the guest boards <laughs> well here's a ray, uh ray bros uh website right here yes. so you got the whole thing here we got the cart we're gonna we're gonna buy right now the jeremy ray personal rider oh my god oh yeah i, I had some requests for personal rider boards mm. so i put those ones up because Every once in a while, someone will hit me up and I'll get them squared away just in person. Yeah. But then enough people do it. And I was like, you know what? I'll just put them out there. So if anyone wants one and doesn't know how to go about it, here it is. So I let people know these are up there if you wanted to get one. Okay. And uh, I'll sign them and send them out. And uh, pretty much all of them went. I think there might be maybe one left. That's so sick. And some people hit me up internationally where like... I couldn't open up international shipping on this because depending on where you live, it's going to be a different amount. Right. And it doesn't have a shipping calculator. So I just had to like handle them in person too. Just shipping email me. I'll figure it out. I gave them a quote and we just ship it out. Ship- but I, I handled most of them. So I think pretty much all those were gone now. Shipping's the worst. Yeah. It's the worst. It, but you know what? I've been using a different company called Pirate Ship. It's good. And it's way better because I was mm. shipping them all through the post office and it was getting pretty pricey because they mm. ended up charging you $15 extra for anything over 31 inches and mm-hmm. the boards are 31 and a half inches. Oh, so it's like, unless goodness. you're going to trim something off the nose and tail and box it right to it, you're pretty much stuck paying the extra 15. Yeah, wow. just, but that, just, that bumps your shipping up to like 30 bucks for a deck that's 60. Nobody's going to notice. What just did you put, say? Pirate ship? The... Pirate ship. It was ended up being just a cheaper shipping option and they'll, they'll buy it for you. And then you buy the label from them, print it out at home and then you just drop it off too. So you're not standing there at the post office filling it out on the spot right. or like, you know having to pay each one individually you just get it all done at home take them to ups drop them off and sometimes it still is at a uh, the post office but the label's already paid for ready you just drop it off nice it ends hmm. up being a lot better it's it speeded up my process a lot oh i just wanted to ask you really quickly because like xyz was a big clothing thing back then you skated for xyz right yeah how how was that how'd you get on xyz um through being on plan b because it was all kind of the same distribution okay and then growing up my favorite skater was danny way Mm -hmm. so i kind of copied his sponsors seriously Mm -hmm. yeah he was your favorite skater growing up he's my favorite skater he's a lot of people's favorite skater danny no no 100 percent. i'm just saying (laughs) like i would have considered i would have thought maybe eric costin or somebody that was more like tech um i liked I liked watching vert skating, even though you don't see me doing any airs, but mm-hmm. like I was impressed seeing people fly around, but towards my era, there's no skate park. So I skated what I skated. True. Yeah. True. But Closest also, skate park also was if, Santa Barbara. If Danny yeah. never skated vert, he would still be considered one of the best street skaters for his time and what he was doing. You could take the vert completely out of it. And he was an awesome. For me, he was yeah. one of the most well-rounded skaters. Right. So that's just awesome time. that he had that extra thing to him where he did 
all of that other stuff. Mm -hmm. He was capable of doing, yeah, vert and then some on the mega ramp and all that. That was all his own idea. Yeah. I remember him talking about like what was possible with a bigger transition. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until years later it got built and he got to test it out, but he already knew that it was possible and what it would take to do it. So we've got, got, we've got Pat in the XYZ video shared a part with Peter Hewitt. All right. Really? I'm yeah. Nice. Look at that. Look at him. Three flip over the trash barrel on its side. Wait, so XYZ was a shop, it's a shop. and then it and a clothing brand. clothing. And then yeah. said it turned into a clothing brand too. Right. It so was, was this for the clothing or the um, shop when XYZ Stars and Bars came out? I felt like it was for the shop. Right. But I thought then so too. It morphed into the clothing company after that. After. Yeah. Okay. I think gotcha. you're right because they were already selling a lot of XYZ gear, mm -hmm. and it was XYZ Skate Supply. But I'm, we'd go to the shop a lot too because it was right there in uh, Oceanside, Carlsbad area. Right near everyone where they lived. Yeah. When we go down there and f skate and film, we'd always go by XYZ. So at first, it was just a skate shop sponsor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you look at the video, everyone that was in it, they probably had different sponsors too. Interesting. Was, yeah. it, was that when uh, that. was Platinum out of that too? Didn't Platinum XYZ. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Was that Behringer right there too? The oh. stairs in a row? Yeah. It was. Spot, Not was so very sick. many people skated those stairs in a row because they were kind of tall and steep. Hell yeah. And you keep but, going And faster. it's downhill, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, it is downhill. The, the run-up was downhill. Look at this tray flip. Wow. Wow. It's yeah. perfect. All that was comfortable. Tricks. Perfect. Oh, man. Hold on. Let me, let's look at this line Heel flip. Stomp. Here he comes. He's just going to the store. <laughs> the tray flip. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Let me go get a Gatorade real quick. Boom. Those were good. I'm telling you, Pat, man, like, yeah, not to gas you up, but you, your style, the precision you, tricks. I mean, you, I was a big fan, man. Not really you. You. Still am, but you know what I mean. Like, when that this, quality holds up. Really. That style, that quality of yeah, skating, that holds up today. Really good. I mean, you know, back then, too, it's like everything mattered. Style mattered. The way you did your tricks. Like, everything, you know? You had it all. Ooh. I mean, it comes to you skating with. Like, skating with this guy, watching him film his video parts. It's like, you got to do it till it's perfect. So when I saw him be like, all right, I got to do it again. It's like, I got to do the same thing. Right. I, I would definitely do it multiple times until I felt good about it. You know, because you could make one and right away. And like, sometimes the first one isn't perfect. And if I felt like I could do it better, I would just do it again. You're already in it. You're already doing it. Why not do it two or three times and pick the one you like the best? And it gives like the filmer to try something different too. Yeah. And, you know. And I also feel like with, with buddies, too, the, the buddy system, it's good. You could be honest with each other, right? Like, yeah. uh, I know you could probably do that better mm -hmm. or this or that, you know? Like, oh, you dragged your foot maybe. You could, right. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. It's nice. Because, like, nice I know what he could do. I've seen him skate for whatever, 30 years. So it's just like, just do it over. Yeah. Yeah. You're already mm -hmm. in it. Do it. And he usually does it right after anyway. And same thing with me. Like, if I did one, like, I can do it better. You'll get it within a couple of tries. True, so you can do true. It better. Yeah. And usually you're happier with it. If it feels good, it probably looks good. And if it feels a little off, there's usually something to it. But sometimes the camera will hide that. That's They'll, true. You'll do something where it didn't feel right. You look at you. It's a good idea to watch it back before you get too oh. deep in the tank. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just watch it back, and if you don't see the thing that you felt, you're usually good. After another two hours, right? I'm like, I've had that happen. Look at that back <laughs> yeah. real quick, and then they look at it. I'm like. Right. What that was, was I thinking? Perfect. perfect. Yeah. Right. You can't even see the thing. But like, if you're yeah. spotting Dude. something that no one else notices, right? Too. Yeah. Well, well you're, you're going. Like, my arm no, moved you're, weird. You're going right by there. the feeling. Right. Yeah. You're of, like right. of skating. You could feel the toe drag. You could feel the. That's usually what it was for me. I'd feel something that was a little off. It just mm -hmm. didn't feel as comfortable. Right. So you try to do it till it feels right. Yeah. I remember filming a trick, and then uh, my friend showed the footage to someone else. And he's like, he doesn't like this, and he's like, why? He's like. Cause my arm did that and they all just started laughing and i'm like all right I, i'm i'm being an idiot i need yeah. to like i need to chill you let that go well yeah, sometimes it, it helps yeah, to get an yeah. outside perspective yeah, you know? yeah it sets you straight like all right yeah like, all right yeah, i've been talked into using all kinds of stuff that i was like no nah, that's not ready like no nah, that's good yeah you're fine yeah all right it's funny uh, when you, you the way you think your skating should look and then the way other people think your skating should look if that makes right. any sense right oh, so, i'm nice. putting a video part together i would have been like i wouldn't have put that trick right there Right. But I mean, I, I've never edited my own parts, so I have no right. idea. Have you guys ever edited your own parts? Yeah. Like but which which ones though? When it came to plan B, second hand smoke, I got to be in the editing room. I got to pick the tricks and the order and I got to use the actual deck. It was like a three quarter deck where we just put the thing in, click, watch it back, and then once you press save on that, it's locked in and you can't change it. So <laughs> you do it in one trick at a time and you gotta watch it back a few times because we have the music 
track laid down. Mm. I was just doing it myself. It was me and Jake Rosenberg and Paul Luna in there Rosenberg. all working on it together. And Jake had edited everything else. We were there to help with like, uh, I think one of the friend sections or one of the montages. And then I got to do my part. And they helped me choose my song because I was kind of bouncing between a few. And then they really felt strongly that should be the song, the cream the white, room. white room. Yeah. yeah. So they were like, that's the it's one. It's a good song. And it and fits you so well too. Well, and the yeah. only reason I almost didn't use that song was because uh, Richard Mulder had skated to the end section in a foundation video. Really? There's like an instrumental section at the end of that song that has no lyrics at all. And we used it all the way up until then, and it ends right before the instrumental section at the end of the part. So wow. it ended up working out. Like, it lined up perfectly, and I'm glad we did use that one because the other ones I don't think would have the same feel. Hmm. Did you end up your part as well? Second of smoke. The Plan B videos. Yeah, I was there in the room while they were doing it. I yeah. don't know if I was doing much of the editing. It's like, okay, we're gonna do this, or we're gonna do that. What do you want next? Okay. So I've never, never did a video part. So it's like, okay. Mm-hmm. So you were kind of just going off of what yeah. they. But I mean, I this was is there, Jacob yeah. Rosenberg. Yeah. He's been, I mean, mm-hmm. phenomenal editor, and he's been doing the Plan B videos already. So I'm just happy to be in the video. Right. Yeah. Were you guys trying Damn. to like, lo- like, so you're you're pressing pretty much play and stop when you're recording these things right Right. you get it set to like about how much you want and you got to get it to the frame and then it was funny because like there's a thing that sucks frames so where you start it sometimes it bounced back a little bit so you had to know how much that overlap was because to get your clip just right you don't want too much write up that's boring you know you want to clip it right when you see something that that's where it should start and then you definitely don't want too much riding away either just dead time so you got to clip it just right to where it looks comfortable Wait, so let's say you did mess up. What would happen? You would either scrap the whole thing and start (laughs) all over, but you can watch it a few times before you lock it in. And we'd all like, does that look good? Look good? Okay. Then lock it in. And if it was off, then you could go back before you save it. You could put it in as many times as you needed to until it looked right, landed on the beat. Sometimes you were trying to make the board land, Hmm. like the wheels hit the ground right on a beat. And if you could do it just right, all right, that one looked good, and then it's save like, it. It's, it's, I'm glad you said that because I, it, it, this has bugged the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. The line, in the, the opening line, where you mm-hmm. go and you d- down the stairs, you pass by Rodney, you pass by all your friends. You, it's got the Carlsbad gap. Yeah, <laughs> the beat doesn't start in the landing. It starts when you're like in the air. Right. Why? Because <laughs> that one, the sound it made when it comes in, like it goes up. You know. So Dude, that's, the bit. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris, Chris was. But it, did he lay down the beat? No. no. He, the uh-huh. beat. It, it starts the, it right starts, when my tail hits. Uh, yeah. But it, it's almost like mid. Right. Mid uh, jump. I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, because this song was weird. It had like more than just a drum beat, it was the, the uplifting sound, you know, like went high pitch. So we match it to that where like I'm in the air every time something was happening to match the music. Oh, the frontside flip. That's right. Yeah. But I, I, it starts like right here. Yeah. Like it starts before he lands. Right. Well, and kind the of the whole thing back then was like on the beat. Yeah, right. You land oh, and the beats pop. Right. Both of those tricks. You're psycho. like firing off right here, dude. Oh, dude. Yeah, you killed that spot, bro. That Imperial double set was fun as hell. Yeah. It was It was low and long it's perfect. and smooth. Yeah. I never so that was fun. There. It's still there, right? But there's like a wall there or something. Is they it? they made it dirt at the top. Oh, is that what they it like, was? Oh, wow. They've yeah. tried to skate stop it a few different ways over the years. At one point, they put a chain across the flat, but you could still go over it just the same. But <laughs> yeah. it's dangerous if you messed up. Yeah. yeah. And then they tried to put like grip tape at the top, uh, but you could still get around it somehow. They, everything they tried was a little funny. And you know, then, uh, it didn't quite work. They finally took out the top layer and just made it like dirt. Dude, look at the switch backside flip down the MB set. Wait, where is it? Is the switch backside flip was in the color video. This oh, is it was after in the that. Color yeah. video. Yeah, yeah, that oh, was switch right, backside flip. Right, and that's right. Were they both done in the same day? Yeah. Yeah. I trip out on that uh, that double set that you're, the imperial one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's videos like way later, like in Transworld videos, um, people doing tricks down that, and yeah. they were done back then. Yeah. Like the same right. tricks. Like I think, I think Chet Towers and Ollie backside flipped it. And, right. And and you did this like. Yeah, both ways. Years right? later, or earlier. Yeah, yeah. I was always like, wow. That's cool. I, did, I did see that pop up. And he even skated to one of the same songs I skated to, too, at one point in a video. What? Yeah. <laughs> you have to talk to Chet Thomas, man. So we're talking about your I video parts and everything. What about the uh, Porsche? You were, did tricks on in Pioneer? Oh, you yeah. Tricks um, on we, had, we had done Porsche. tricks over my friend's car. He had a, a blue convertible Austin Healey. 
<laughs> so we okay. drove that over there and did some tricks over that. And then uh, when we were filming for the audio video, they wanted to do something there. So they rented that thing to drive over there and do it. They rented the yeah. Porsche, yeah. drove over to Pioneer, parked it there. Okay. Right. I've always wondered that. Yeah. It was in the uh, audio, One Step Beyond, right? Yep. And then yeah. we had another thing. We brought a, an, uh, an Audi TT over there once. And just me and Jonas did it for, uh, it was Sharp Eyewear. It was a sunglass company. And mm. they had a Brothers series where we both had signature sunglasses. And for that ad, we brought an Audi TT to Pioneer. Mm -hmm. And we both ollied it side by side. That's sick. So that was just a fun ad for our buddy, um, Jake Sharp's company at the time. Hmm. He was Here. doing sunglasses. Now, see, I didn't know, because here's, you are driving the whole Porsche thing. And then you right. went to Pioneer. I mean, that's probably a, kind of a, yeah, it's kind of a ballsy move. Rent a Porsche. I mean, I guess wow. it's got insurance. Yeah, I remember um, Jonas was doing backside flips over it that day. Mm. But they don't always come up all the way. So the, the board oh. was hitting the door. And it was like, yeah, oh, right. oh, man, yeah. Mm. It hit the door pretty good. No. It was like, ooh. So Rod, I think we, we ended up hanging like uh, one of the like floor mats over the door. So in case it hit it, it would buffer it a That's little. That's smart. Damn. Yeah. Did Rod film some of this? Josh did. Oh, Josh. Josh. Yeah. Josh Stewart. Oh, I remember. I think this is the day when um, Jonas had his scooter there and he was towing me in. And we didn't know how fast you needed to go. So on the first go, he takes me there. It doesn't feel like we're going that fast. I ollie off the bump and I clear the car and I kept going. I was still going up after I passed the car. <laughs> and uh, at the end, I was flying so far. I saw the car go by like real quick <laughs> and I'm still going up and I'm like, oh shit. So I kicked it out. I must have been well overhead high. And uh, I just remember hitting the ground and I couldn't run that fast. So I had to like just tuck and roll real quick and it whipped me around so fast my ankles hit the ground when I came around like stuntman roll. And then I got up and I was like, damn, that was actually really crazy. And I asked him, how fast was that? He's like, I don't know, like 30, 35. And it was like, that might be too fast. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we yeah. went back around and we found out that the right speed was like 17 or 18 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> About half that to get over that. And you'd still clear it by plenty. So the first one, we didn't know how fast, like a, we don't do toe in stuff, you know? And uh. <laughs> The only, the only reason why we did the tow in there, because that spot has wind right at your face. So you go there the wrong day, you'll be pushing into that wind bad. and it just wears you out. <laughs> no so doubt. it's like Jonas had his uh, Honda Helix scooter. So he rode that out there. And and when he wanted to do it, I was towing him. So, and which is, I don't ride his scooter very often. So I had to figure it out, but I got him going the right speed. He was able to get over it. But, How uh, fast was that? About 65? Yeah. 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 He launched me off that thing so far. Imagine going that fast on it. I mean, people do it. They bomb these hills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so yeah, it 35 was going at a, at, a, like at a spot. Right. And I snapped the tail and I went up and it was on my feet well past the car. And I just remember seeing the car go by and still going laugh. up like, this is not good. I probably should have just backside grabbed it and held on. Yeah. In those positions, that's when you can like get the roll up. When, uh, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, I was worried. I'm still going up. Like, this is too high. Yeah. But uh, I remember on the way back home from that, Jonas was riding his scooter on the freeway and the accelerator got stuck it got pinned like the the wire that does the acceleration Good got Lord. stuck on something and it pinned it and he said traffic started stopping so he had to like split the lane and oh. figure out what to do it was like if that had happened to me on it while we were towing him in i would have been Dusty. launching off that thing with the scooter i, I don't know how to stop the we thing. turned the turn he, he was off. able to like, he would have uh, launched off with you right it, it was crazy like <laughs> really would have gone know what to do. <laughs> so thank god it happened while he was on it because he knows what to do and he like figured out yeah just hit the kill switch but it kind of like bogged down and he had enough speed to just get off the freeway wow. and he, he got it off the exit and then uh put it up on the kickstand and when he started it back up it was still stuck pinned like as soon as you start up the wheels like kicking off like oh I so we had to have a friend come and pick it up that day in a truck oh my god and they just dr like rode it home that way and got it fixed I stick to four wheels man yeah, i want to see sketchy. someone get towed by like a motorcycle and the motorcycle and the skateboarder Jump. go off the thing go off the thing mm. yeah that would be insane never been done if you do it with that a dirt bike you could do it but i yeah. wouldn't do it on a street bike or, or like even a harley ha kind harley. of bike <laughs> Yeah. Got, a knuckle, could, got a knucklehead over here. Gonna, uh, he's going to do it with the road hog. We got, a, we, got a Harley, right? we got a panhead over here. We're going to drag it off the jump anyway. Yeah. All of Evil's stuff was on regular Harleys. Like the heavy. Oh, Evil Knievel. Evil Knievel was yeah. jumping on those old school Harleys. He was a mad man. Hard tails. Mad man. Mm -hmm. Listen, this has been epic, dude. Breath. Pat Chinita, Jeremy Ray in the building. Go check out 
Way br- Ray Bros. <laughs> <laughs> right? One of yeah. these uh, Ray Got Bros. The tongue twister. Go check out RayBros.com. 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 Get Pat Chinita's board. Get some Jeremy Ray boards. Get some Paul Luna boards. Right. Mm-hmm. And we've been throwing some artwork on there too now. Like Sick. When I do like the limited art prints and stuff like that. Because originally I had a, a separate site for that one. But it was like just easier for people to come get it all in one place. place, I think you guys have dealt with that too. Oh, it's just easier to do it all in one place. Let's consolidate. Let's consolidate. Do you do any art? You artist? Uh, No, I scribble like a kid. You (laughs) put it on the site. That's art these days too. I know. (laughs) You could have a full art show, Pat. You know what I'm saying? Me, me, and you, art show. Have you seen my little characters? Uh, They're pretty good, dude. They're they're not bad. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know who else? Appyard's drawings. Yeah. I remember uh, seeing the, the mug that he did yeah. for you guys and stuff. Yeah. We got it right here. Yeah. This is Apple Yard. So he, good. He drew that hand drawing. That's like Beavis and Butthead style right there. I know. Exactly. Look rad. at that. That's yeah. me and Raj. I, I also it. like there's just nothing underneath the table. Yeah, we made it. Just, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> no <laughs> legs or anything. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. table top. Are, we, are we on this level right here or... Um, I'm I'm more like a tic tac toe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, stick finger type guy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, dude. But Apple Yard bro. is buttery. He's yeah. the best. Yeah, dude. Buttery. He's the like best. the definition of buttery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. his skating is so smooth. I love it. Still to this day, man. And something mm-hmm. about Apple Yard I remember noticing was he would do just enough to get up to something. Like if he wanted to kick flip five zero something, mm-hmm. he wasn't going higher than it and dropping to it. He would do just enough to get on it, and it's just barely clearing it, but it's so smoothly setting on so on it. True. It was like, like perfect. When he tray flip over something or like up to step up, it was always just enough to get there yeah. comfortably, and it was crazy. I, I didn't see too many people doing it like that. Right. He had that much control where he knew how much he needed to get there and no extra. It's it was like right there. finesse also. Yeah. This is like this, oh, this it makes like it so smooth. Finesse, like just, uh. Yeah, people would like gap out the rails a lot, you know, right. and he would just go to moderate speed do exactly perfect yeah. precision to that spot yeah he knew Dude. exactly how yeah. much he needed and he would do just that yeah. can That's we right. uh we can we give you some yeti stuff we got some new yeti stuff Absolutely. can we give you some uh yeti, yeti yep. swag kelly do you want to yeah. do, mind doing that just, just grab a couple, couple yeti. yeti yeah a couple couple, couple yeti things while okay. he's grabbing that i have something for you guys too what yeah pat did you bring anything for us well this is from, <laughs> from gray bros <laughs> collective right here <laughs> But let's see. So we do have some Ooh, some wood wood style. Oh, these are wood laser engraved sunglasses. Okay. So I got enough for the the class. So those are fun. How do they look? Always good. Yeah, I mean, those good. are classic right there. Oh. Yeah, that looks. I got nice. a weird head, so these fit pretty nice steps. Yeah, no, those actually angle. look like sometimes, they were made for you. Okay, good. Those are sometimes good. the glasses are too big for my yeah. head. My head got a small head. And then a while back, I've been doing these keychains. For the Ray Bros brand, and uh, I was able to personalize some of them. So I got a crab right. right there. Look at that. What? Look yeah, how about that? that? Dude. So throw that on your keys, and you'll never have trouble opening a drink anymore. You'll, you'll be all set. Ready. And I also got a J Dubs over here for Ooh, you. Let's go. Specific by the way, J-dubs. by the way. From one J Dubs to another. There well, we I, go. I, yeah. he, I don't know if he, he may be the original J Dubs. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I mean, we're in there. Hey, we're, we're from we're the both, same era. We're both J Dubs. We're from the same day. era. Yeah. <laughs> there could only be one J Dubs. I can't get confused. Yeah. No, thank so you I got, for that, I got J Dubs right there. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I got one for Kelly. What? Got heart on there. Yeah. Got our own keychains. Keychains. Our names oh, on there. What? I even got one for. Uh, yeah. what? I got one for Roger too. We got Bagley on there. Ooh. So, thank you so much. Bro. Wait, did you get Chris sunglasses? Yeah, I got sunglasses. Yeah, I was gonna say. No, I just it's too bright here. Right. Put them on. Too bright. <laughs> and I also brought the um, Jonas pins. They're like Amazing. little enamel pins Amazing. with the design I did Bro. for my brother. Rest in peace, by the way. Yeah. Man. Oh, man. So we're, we're keeping his name rolling. Yes. Amazing. In style. Well, thank Amazing. you, dude. Yeah. Thank you. So thank I got you that much, for bro. you guys. Amazing. And then we brought a few of the stickers for you guys to rock on your board or thank you bro a lot of these end up on people's water bottles just because you end up using it a lot and it's always there Love so that. it ends up uh just giving it some flavor perfect nice. so that's thank fun you. thank yeah. you thank you so well, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what there's a perfect thing to put it on right here we got exactly. the nine club mm. water bottle stay hydrated out there we got we got more stuff in the back we'll give you uh it's we got all kinds tour. of stuff we yeah. got uh but we got Check socks that. too oh, nice 
what color do you want? Do you want the red or the orange? We got black ones back there, too. I think I'll go with the cherry clam. The red. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I hear that. Quick. And thinking. we got the Nine Club stance socks right here. Those are sick. We're just doing a little oh, trade perfect. here, right Thank here. You. Oh, wait. We'll first, of all, first, first of all, first of all, first of all, Pat. Dude, it was such a pleasure, thank dude. Thank finally you having so me here. Yeah, much. thank you for yes, coming. Dude. Thank you guys for coming. Come back through. anytime. Okay. We'd love sure. to have you guys back, or you know, you solo, or you with another friend, or whatever, you know, or you can come back with Jeremy too. Yeah. I'll just to uh, plug it in there. I did talk to Rodney Mullen about coming on. Really? And, uh, he said he might be down after the holidays. Or okay. Close, or closer to the holidays. Oh, closer Amazing. to oh. the holidays. Right. So that'd be a good Christmas episode. We'll, we'll work. Love that. I'll keep working on that. But he was receptive to it and. You know, I think we can pull it off. Let's they, get it. People would be so now, happy. Here's the thing. Because day one was on, right? And day one right. said, oh, I want to come back with Rodney. Right. Do you think we should have Rodney on solo or with day one song? I think Rodney with somebody would help just for Rodney. For so sure. So you could bounce some stories back and forth. And I think got, it makes it more enjoyable for him rather than just being all directed at him. Yeah. Because he might be a little more introverted when it comes down to like, yeah, but speaking he could about skate, it, he could talk skate though. He can, you know? yeah, but like you will probably get more out of him when he's there with a buddy. Two I'm table. his buddy. I've known him for years. <laughs> you know what I mean? He'll just be rekindling. That's it, true. You know what I mean? He used to yeah. flow me boards. Absolutely. Yeah, so you guys got it. lots of history. Said yeah, that. bring him on down. That would be that uh, would be incredible. Pat, you think? Yeah. Patch, yeah. Do you think mm-hmm. Rodney? R- Rodney and Day One Two Tables will be Rodney versus Day One Three. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> look at that! I got the copyright. Look at that. Absolutely. Here's some socks for that you. That would be a <laughs> sick hey, episode. Hey, thank you guys. Le- I'll be watching that. Jeremy, always yeah. a pleasure, dude. Thank you so much. You always come yeah. by. You always grace us with your presence, man. You did some video uh, reviews back there of your old video yeah, parts and stuff like that. Yeah, we got through a few of them. Yeah. We'll have to go all the way back to the Blockhead ones, though, because those are when they get pretty interesting. I, I just yeah. want to thank you for always being gracious and oh, yeah. uh, coming through and just spending some time with us, man. We always appreciate no that, No problem. Dude. Thank you. This thing will get some use for sure. Pachanita. Yes. Huge like fan. Always, yeah, always going to be a huge guys. fan. Appreciate you. Come back anytime. For sure. Yep. Bring some more sunglasses. And thanks for always being there, Pat. Appreciate it. Always here. Oh, Friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he gave me the thumbs up. He gave me the okay to get on. God, he gave you the okay. Twice. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Twice. Yep. Well, I had to get on Ray Bros, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go.